So good afternoon each and every one of you. I hope everyone is safe and sound and doing extremely well. This is Baswarat sir, your biology master teacher. Students, before we start today's amazing class, quickly let me know in the comment section if my voice, check, 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 is audible to you and the presentation behind me is visible to each and every one of you. Hello, good evening each and every one of you students. So students, today we'll be doing the NCRT line by line complete decoding of the entire chapter. So before we start the session, I want everyone to smash the like button right now. Right now, smash the like button and do not forget to share the video as well because this video is equally important for every neat aspirant because we know ecology is a major chunk. Apart from that, I want every student to also share this video because this is a very important unit for your board examination. Okay, so students, while we wait for everyone to join, to one minute, we'll wait for everyone to join. I will give you a simple question. The question is right here. What is the question? Dash is the available biomass for consumption by heterotrophs in an ecosystem. Quickly, let's see how many of you can answer this question. While we wait for everyone to join, this is the question. Dash is the available biomass for the consumption of the consumption by the heterotrophs in an ecosystem. Students, if you know the answer, you can like the video right now. You can, you, can, you can like, if you know the answer, like the video right now. And if you do not know the answer, do not worry, not even a little bit. Why? Because I'll be teaching you the entire chapter line by line. Every single line will be decoded today. And, and also, since we are doing NCAT line by line, I would want all of you to do three things. What are three things? First, please go get your NCRT book right now. Run. All of you run and get your NCRT book right now and keep it in front of you. So every single time I read a line, every single time I read a line, I want every one of you to read the line with me. Read the line with me. The second thing, keep a separate book next to you. Why? Because I'll be making you write some few points. I'll, making you, I'll be making you write a few points. So note down those points. And the third thing you need to get right now is a water bottle because because I forgot mine and also to make sure all of you are hydrated. So can we start? Can we start the class? I want to see some hearts and fire in the chat if you want me to start the class. So what is the answer here? Answer is very simple. That is your net primary productivity. Do not worry. If you do not know the answer, I will be teaching you every single concept. I will be teaching you every single concept. What is net primary productivity? What is the gross primary productivity? What is the meaning of productivity? And students, if you want to be productive in today's class, watch the video till the end. Watch the video till the end if you want to be productive. This is going to be a two hour session. And in the next two hours, the chapter will be imprinted in your brain. And also, we will be solving towards the end of the session, at least 10 to 15 previous year questions and the end of the video. In the middle also are so many questions. So students, are you excited? Are you ready for starting the ecology? Are you ready to learn the botany? Are you ready to learn the every single line of NCRT? Ready? So before we start, this is a telegram channel that is the Vedantu Neat English. You can log on to the telegram channel, join it. Every single notes updates will be given to you on this particular channel right here. I'll be reading the line. I'll be reading the line of NCRT. I want each and every one of you to read the line with me. So ready, read the line with me. Now, before we understand what is an ecosystem, I want everyone to understand the meaning of system. Simple. What is the meaning of system? For example, students, remember, system is actually a functional unit. What is a system? System is a functional unit. For example, we have a computer system. In the computer system, we have mouse, keyboard, monitor, CPU. All of these components are working together for a one function. Similarly, in your body, we have the digestive system. Digestive system has many components like buccal cavity, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. Yes, every single component in the digestive system is working together to make sure it functions as a single unit. So just like a system, our ecosystem is also a functional unit. 
That is the first line, first question. An ecosystem can be visualized as a functional unit of a nature. This is a question. Yes, first line, first question. What is a what is an ecosystem? Ecosystem is a functional unit of nature. Repeat after me. Repeat after me, everyone. Ecosystem is a functional unit of nature. Okay. Students, are you able to see the presentation? Are you able to see the presentation? Tell me in the chat right now quickly. Where living organisms, that is you and me, both of us are living organisms. Living organisms interact among themselves and all and also with the surroundings, physical environment. That is living organisms. Living organisms that such as me and you, we interact. Yes, although I'm interacting with the camera, my words are reaching your ears. My vision, uh, my whole entire physical structure, you're able to see. Yes. So we living organisms are interacting with each other and also with our surroundings. For example, I am breathing air. Air is a type of abiotic. Yes, air is abiotic in nature. What about the water which we drink? That is also abiotic in nature. What about plants? Plants are interacting with soil, water. So what is an ecosystem? What is happening in an ecosystem? Ecosystem is a functional unit of nature in which living components as well as non-living components. So if I were to tell you ecosystem in which living components as well as non-living components, non-living components, all right, abiotic, non-living components interact with each other, interact with each other. Clear? That is an ecosystem. Awesome. Next line of NCRT. Ecosystem varies greatly in size from a small pond all the way from a small pond to a massive ocean. So ecosystem does not have a fixed size. It can vary from a small pond to a large ecosystem, large ocean, to a forest, large forest or a sea. Many ecologists regard the entire, see this also is an important line, also can be asked as a question. Many ecologists regard the entire biosphere, the entire biosphere, that is the earth, entire biosphere as a global ecosystem. So if I ask you a question, assertion reason question, what is the assertion? Assertion is saying, assertion is saying that the entire biosphere is a global ecosystem, that is the assertion. Reason can be true or false, they can give you a reason. And you will tell me, where did the question come from? Is the assertion true? You will be like, yes sir, the assertion is true. That is, the entire biosphere is a global ecosystem. Clear? As composite of all local ecosystem on earth. Now, what is the meaning of this line? The meaning of line is very simple. On the earth, we have many different small, small ecosystems. When all these small, small ecosystem come together, they form the entire biosphere which is a global ecosystem true now since this system is too much big and complex too big and complex yes too big and complex to be studied at one time it is convenient to divide it into two basic categories so the entire ecosystem the entire ecosystem can be divided into two basic categories what are the two basic categories the two basic categories here are terrestrial ecosystem the first one is terrestrial ecosystem the other one is your aquatic ecosystem terrestrial as well as aquatic ecosystem now why are we dividing it why are we dividing it we are dividing because it is very complex to understand the entire ecosystem that is why we are dividing the entire ecosystem into two different parts the part number one is terrestrial ecosystem the part part number second is aquatic ecosystem now forest grasslands and deserts forest write down this way with me forest grassland forest grassland and desert and desert are part of and desert are examples of terrestrial ecosystem so if you ask me what are the examples of terrestrial ecosystem we have forest grasslands 
and deserts. Now, what about aquatic ecosystem? What are the examples of aquatic ecosystem? Pond, lake, wetland, river and estuaries. So, what do we have here? We have the pond, pond, lake, wetland. We also have the wetland, river and estuary. River as well as the estuaries as well as the estuary. Now, can anyone in the chat tell me, can anyone in the chat tell me, can anyone in the chat tell me, what is the, what is the meaning of estuary? Now, what is the estuary? What is the meaning of estuary? Estuary is actually a location where the fresh water, estuary is a location where fresh water, fresh water will meet, will meet the ocean water. Fresh water will meet the ocean water. That is a estuary. True? Clear? That is a estuary. Now, what about wetland? What is the meaning of a wetland? The meaning of wetland is very simple. Wetland is nothing but, wetland is nothing but a soil. The entire soil is covered by water on top. I changed the color. I changed the color. So, wetland is nothing but a soil. It is completely covered by water there. It is completely covered by water. That is the wetland. If I, if I were to tell you an example for wetland, one example is deltas. How many of you heard what is a delta? Delta. Delta is a part of the river. That is, when a river is flowing, the end point of a river, the end point of a river where the entire river water gets emptied, all the sedimentation takes place. That is a delta. So, example for delta, example of wetland is the delta. Okay. Now, actually, are some examples of aquatic ecosystem. Now, students, students, listen to me very carefully. This terrestrial and aquatic, this classification, this classification is based on natural ecosystem. The entire classification here, that is terrestrial as well as aquatic, is based on the natural classification that is in these type of ecosystems humans are not involved humans are not involved but what if humans are involved what if we make our own ecosystem for example i'll tell you one simple example i am talking to you you are on this channel you are learning from me you are understanding the words from me you are understanding the concepts from me we are actually a small ecosystem we are actually a part of small ecosystem just like this we also the other type of ecosystem is nothing but your artificial ecosystem artificial ecosystem now what is the artificial ecosystem artificial ecosystem is a system which is human made which is a human made ecosystem right now what are the examples here the examples for your artificial ecosystem is cropland the first one is cropland. The second one is an aquarium. So, NCRT is giving you two types of artificial examples here. Cropland and aquarium. Now, can anyone in the chat tell me what are the other examples? What are the other examples for artificial ecosystem? Yes, botanical gardens. Exactly, Preeti. Zoo, 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 botanical gardens, aquariums, right? Aquariums, all of these are examples for artificial ecosystem now i'll ask you one more question beautiful question which is the largest which is the largest artificial ecosystem can anyone in the chat tell me can anyone in the chat tell me can sangeeta tell me which is the largest artificial ecosystem the answer is very simple it is nothing but your field crops field crops are actually the largest because we need food in India, we need a lot of food, right? So, your crop field is actually the largest ecosystem. Similarly, we also have plantations, tea plantations, right? Coffee plantations. All of those are also artificial ecosystem. Amazing. Now, may you all, uh, may also be the considered as human-made ecosystem. Students, the first Shivani Sangeeta, the first paragraph of your NCRT has been decoded. I'll put a tick mark here. 
I'm putting a tick mark here. So the entire first paragraph is over. Any doubt in this paragraph, start shooting all of you. Start shooting. Any doubt in this paragraph, particular paragraph, no doubts. I will go to the next paragraph now. Done? Yes, students. This is how we'll be finishing the entire chapter today. Every single line I'll be telling you, every single point I'll be explaining you today. Okay? Now, the next paragraph. Before we go to the next paragraph, there was one line. There was one line I told you. The entire globe, the entire uh, biosphere is actually made up of small, small ecosystems. You remember that? The entire biosphere is a global ecosystem which is made up of many different types of local ecosystems. If for, for you to understand that concept, can I show you a small diagram? You're like, yes, sir, I will show you a diagram. Here. Can you see? This is the entire biosphere. This is the entire biosphere. In this entire biosphere, we have different types of local ecosystems. For example, we have mountain ranges, forests, desert. All of these are what? All of these are a pockets of local ecosystems which are coming together and making the entire biosphere. Done? Amazing. Let's see the next line. This is just a small line before we start the chapter. We will first look at the structure of the ecosystem. That is what we're going to do the first point. In order to ap appreciate the input, that is productivity, that is the second point we'll be learning. Transfer of energy, with, that is the third point we'll be learning. That is your food chain and food web. Newton cycle, which is not in your syllabus. And the output, that is degradation and energy loss we'll be learning. That is the fourth one here. And we will also look at the relationships, that is cycles, chains, webs that are created as a result of these energy flows within a system and their interrelationships. Relationships. Clear? Students, can we start the chapter now? This is where the actual chapter starts. This is where the actual chapter is starting now. Can we start? Can we start the chapter now? With the high energy, we will be, the start, we will be starting the chapter now ecosystem till now the last 15 minutes were just the introduction just the introduction for you to understand get the feel of the chapter now we'll be starting the chapter now so first we will be learning about ecosystem structure and function structure and function in earlier classes that is younger classes 6th 7th 8th 9th 10th you have looked at the various components of the environment Yes, various components of environment, abiotic as well as biotic. Abiotic components are non-living components, while your biotic components are living components. True. You studied how the individual biotic and abiotic factors affect each other and their surroundings. Yes, we affect our surroundings. Let us look at these components in a more integrated manner. If NCR is telling you, if NCR is telling you, let's look at it in a much more intricate, integrated manner. Right? And see how the flow of energy takes place within these components of the ecosystem. Now, interactions of biotic and uh, abiotic components result in a physical structure. This is very important. Interactions, interactions between abiotic and biotic components when they are interacting which will result in a physical structure of ecosystem which will result in what which will result in a physical structure this is very important physical structure that is a characteristics of char characteristic for each type of ecosystem students listen to me very very carefully now listen to me very carefully what is the meaning of this physical structure here the NCRT is using high language here. We need to understand the physical structure of ecosystem. Physical structure of ecosystem has two components. It has two components. The first component. The first component of physical structure of ecosystem is nothing but species composition. Yes, the first one is your spe species composition. The second component. The second component of the Physical structure of ecosystem. Physical structure of ecosystem is nothing but stratification. What is it? The second one is stratification. I'll write down here. I'll write strat. 
सो इन द फिजिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ इको सिस्टम इन द फिजिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ इको सिस्टम वी हैव टू डिफरेंट कॉम्पोनेंट दैट इज द फर्स्ट कॉम्पोनेंट इज योर स्पीसीज कॉम्पोजिशन द सेकेंड कॉम्पोनेंट हियर इज स्ट्राइडिफिकेशन क्लियर ना लेट रीड द एनसीआर टी आइडेंटिफिकेशन एंड एन्यूमरेशन ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल स्पीसीज ऑफ एन इको सिस्टम गिवस एस स्पीसीज कॉम्पोजिशन सो वॉट इज स्पीसीज कॉम्पोजिशन like how how you are sitting in front of me we have around 55 students watching us right now all the students who are watching right now are different type of species yes all of you are humans this is an ecosystem the you all of you are watching the video are part of this ecosystem and you are also a part of species composition similarly there might be a class going on the offline somewhere right now offline there will have different set of students that is also a type of species composition and if i were to talk about flora and fauna yeah you have plants animals right birds all of these when we identify and meaning of enumeration is nothing but giving it a number that becomes a species composition so species composition is a part of physical structure of ecosystem remember that point it can get very confusing okay now now this is a pyq this right here is a previous year question this right here students my dear students this right here is a previous year question read with me all of you read with me now vertical distribution of different species vertical distribution this is vertical this is horizontal now we are talking about vertical vertical distribution of different species occupying different levels is called as stratification let me draw and show you let me draw and show you quickly see here students this is a vertical distribution this is a vertical distribution of species for example we have species number 1 here species number 2 here 3 is here and 4 is here this is the vertical distribution of species that this is called as stratification this is called as what stratification i'll give you one more example i will give you one more example now listen to me very carefully listen to me very carefully students this is a tree here this is a tree here yes this is one level then we have certain shrubs here we have a shrub here then we have a small herb here a small herb is also here then we have small small grasses then we have small small grasses so this is first level this is the herb is a shrub is a second level the small herb is a third level and finally the grass this is your tree this is your shrub this is your herb and finally this is the grass can you see vertical level of distribution this is called as stratification this is called as what stratification clear for example a tree occupies the top vertical strata we just learned the diagram a tree will occupy the canopy will occupy the top level a tree will occupy the top level top strata or a layer of a forest first one here a shrub the second the shrub will be on the second you know the diagram and the herb on the third and grasses occupy the bottom layer so bottom will occupy the bottom layer that is called as that is called as now stratification any doubt in stratification any doubt in this particular paragraph ask away ask me right now ask me right now, students my dear students ask me right now hello mona welcome to the class ask me right now any doubt in this paragraph ask me see here students all of you need to focus here on all of you need to focus your extreme attention here on two points what is physical structure physical structure has two parts one is your species composition that is the different identification and numbering of species then we have stratification what is stratification stratification is nothing but stratification is nothing but vertical distribution of species example is given right here done next paragraph amazing the next paragraph is important the components of ecosystem the different components 
द डिफरेंट कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ इकोसिस्टम आर सीन एज फंक्शन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लाइन आर सीन एज फंक्शन एज द फंक्शन एज अ यूनिट द फंक्शन एज अ यूनिट वेन you consider the following aspects when you consider the following aspects remember i told you in the starting what is a system a system will have multiple components and all these multiple components of a system will be working together just like that we have different aspects of a ecosystem right here all of these different ecosystems all of this different aspects of ecosystem will work together as a unit as a functional unit that is the system i told you in the starting so let's understand one by one what first we have productivity then we have decomposition then we have energy flow and finally we have the nutrient cycle i'll give you a quick example here can i give you a quick example now students let's use dark blue i'll give you a quick example your dad is giving you money your dad is earning the money or your mother is earning the money or someone in your house is earning the money so if someone is earning the money that is called as productivity productivity is like producing money or producing in the case here organic matter organic matter production so that is the productivity means to produce something in your case in your house dad or mom will be working and they will produce money and that money will be given to you what will you do with the money you will take the money go eat ice cream go eat golgappa go eat pizza burger what are you doing you are spending the money what are you doing you are spending the money you are decomposing the money you are decomposing the money that is decomposition that is decomposition where the organic matter is destroyed just like how you destroyed the money okay then we have the energy flow now what is this energy flow do you directly get the money sometimes sometimes what happens dad is giving the money to the mother and you are going to mother mummy mummy please give me 10 rupees give me 20 rupees amma please uh, i want to eat some chocolate i want to take my friend out for a movie you last know like that that is energy transfer that is energy flow that is called as energy flow finally we have the nutrient cycles that is the complete flow of energy that is called as nutrient cycle can we start now can we start with the productivity now can we start with productivity students before may i before i make you understand i will draw a small diagram i will small i'll draw a small diagram to explain the entire all of these points with the help of a diagram so all of you draw the diagram with me can all of you draw the diagram with me now to i make you understand productivity decomposition energy flow newton cycle i will draw one diagram draw the diagram with me now all of you take your book all of you take your book outside all of you take your book now let's color color which color light blue students imagine this is a pond this is a beautiful pond here we have a beautiful pond here yes this is a pond this is a pond right now in this pond what is their main component the main component of this pond is nothing but the water yes the main component of this pond right here is the water now this water can we water is a solvent water is a universal solvent can we add some solute into the solvent so like yes sir we can that is basic chemistry so can i tell in this water right here it has certain soluble one second not soluble one second students this particular water right here it has certain this water right here it has certain inorganic as well as certain organic components in it yes this water right here it has certain organic as well as inorganic components dissolved in this solvent that is water here yes sir then we also have a sun coming out here beautiful sun is coming out here which is giving out sunlight which is giving out sunlight yes sir it is giving out sunlight now inside this water do we have certain oxygen in it does it have oxygen in it yes it has oxygen inside it that is a form of air yes so can i tell can i tell you all of you students this water this sunlight and the air all of these are what 
they are basically your abiotic factors. This light, water, and air, all of these are what? Abiotic factors. Abiotic factors. Now, students, in this particular pond, in this particular pond, will we have certain small, small microscopic algae called as phytoplanktons? Yes, sir. We will have tiny microscopic phytoplanktons. Tiny microscopic phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons. Yes, sir. We will have that. If this is a particular pond, at the bottom of the pond, at the bottom of the pond, will we have soil? At the bottom of the pond, will we have soil? Yes, sir. At the bottom of the pond, will we have soil? Now, this soil is also part of abiotic factor. This soil right here is also a part of your abiotic factors. Now, listen to me very carefully. In this bottom of the pond, will we have certain, in the bottom of the pond, can we have certain small, small algae growing here? Yes, sir. There can be algae can be grown here. Can we have small, small submerged plants? Yes, sir. We can have tiny submerged plants here. Submerged plants. Submerged plants. At the margin, can you see this margin of this? At this margin, can we have certain marginal plants? Yes, in the margin, we can have certain marginal plants. Now, students, you tell me in the chat, which organism will feed on the phytoplankton? Tell me in the chat right now, which organism will feed on the phytoplankton? It is none other than our handsome zooplankton. So, there is a zooplankton eating, eating the phytoplankton. We have the zooplankton which is feeding on the phytoplanktons. Now, students, zooplankton, phytoplankton, algae, submerged plants, marginal plants, are all of these components part of biotic factors? Yes, sir. So, students, in this ecosystem right here, we have phytoplanktons, we have biotic factors, and abiotic factors are interacting among each other. Yes. Now, students, tell me in the chat, tell me in the chat right now, this algae, this phytoplankton, this plant, can they do photosynthesis? You'll be like, yes, sir, they have chlorophyll A. In the case of, we have, in the algae, we have chlorophyll B, C, and, uh, different type of pigments. They can do photosynthesis. Yes. So, students, this algae right here, phytoplankton, submerged plant, all of these plants are part of productivity. They are part of what? They are part of productivity here. That is the that is the productivity because they can produce the organic matter. That is your photosynthate or glucose. Now, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. When this phytoplankton or zooplankton or this small, small fishes, small, small fishes, when they die, they come to the bottom of the bottom of the ocean. At the bottom of the ocean, we have a separate type of organism called as your fungi. Fungi as well as fungus as well as bacteria. At the bottom, we have fungus as well as bacteria. Now, this particular fungus or bacteria, this particular fungus or bacteria, will they eat all the dead and decaying matter? So, can I call them? Can I call this bacteria as well as fungus as decomposers? Yes, they are the decomposers. They are the decomposers that is also part of your ecosystem. Clear? Clear? Now, <clears throat> when the decomposers will completely break down the organic matter, when the decomposers completely break the organic matter, will the organic matter go back to the soil? Yes, sir. The organic matter will go back to the soil. And that organic matter which is going back to the soil, inorganic matter, can they be taken up by, again by the plants? Yes, sir. The organic matter can be taken again, inorganic matter can be taken up by the plants again. That is called as what? That is called as nutrient cycling. That is called as what? Nutrient cycling. Did we cover all the points? 
did we cover all the points energy flow that is nothing but conversion of energy flow is nothing but your conversion of your sunlight photosynthesis energy flow phytoplankton is eaten by zooplankton that is energy flow every single point here every single point has been covered every single point has been covered by the beautiful diagram next time don't tell me i don't use colors next time don't tell me sweetie i don't use colors okay now 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 let's read the ncrd line let's read the ncrd line now to understand the ethos now what is the meaning of ethos the meaning of ethos here means characters to understand the characters of an aquatic ecosystem let us take a small pond as an example which we already took as an example in this in this is a fairly self-sustaining unit what is the meaning of self-sustaining the meaning of self-sustaining is that it does not require outside interference it will work on its own it will work on its own unit and rather simple example to explain this is a very simple example to explain even the complex interactions that exist in an aquatic ecosystem a pond is a shallow water body in which students i'm reading reading these lines when i'm reading these lines remember the diagram which i drew remember the diagram which i drew and understand the lines it's a shallow water body in which uh, in which all the above mentioned four basic components of an ecosystem are well exhibited that is your productivity decomposition nutrient cycling and energy flow the abiotic components is the water told you with all the dissolved inorganic told you inorganic and organic substances told you and rich soil deposits at the bottom of the pond the solar radiation drew it solar input the cycle of temperature day length and other climatic conditions regulate the rate of functioning of the entire pond that is solar radiation is there the autotrophs components include the phytoplanktons some algae and floating sub floating submerged and marginal plants we learned that found at the edges the consumers the consumers the, the consumers are represented by the zooplanktons remember the phytoplanktons are eaten by zooplanktons those are the consumers consumers the free swimming and bottom dwelling forms the decomposers are fungi who are the decomposers are the fungi bacteria and flagellates the flagellates are nothing but the protozoans flagellates are nothing but the protozoans especially abundant at the bottom of the pond now this system performs all the functions of an ecosystem of the and of the biosphere as a whole the conversion of inorganic to inorganic to organic material inorganic to organic is photosynthesis inorganic to organic is photosynthesis with the help of radiant energy of the sun by the autotrophs obviously all autotrophs will do the photosynthesis consumption of the autotrophs by the heterotrophs that is your zooplanktons De decomposition and mineralization by the dead matter to release them back that is nutrient cycling is happening for reuse by the autotrophs these events are repeated over and over and over and over and again there is unidirectional movement of energy very important line very very start everyone write down this very important line this point actually this point right here exp is explaining your pyramid pyramid of energy pyramid of energy yes there is unidirectional movement of energy that is the energy which is coming from the sun we cannot give it back to the sun the energy which we are obtaining from the plants we cannot give it back to the plants unidirectional flow of energy energy towards the higher trophic levels and its dissipation and loss as a heat to the environment that is when we are going from the low and low trophic level to higher trophic level some amount of energy is lost that we'll be learning later on as 10 percent loss see this is called as foreshadowing your ncrt is actually giving you information it is actually giving you information here but it is not telling you fully okay this is actually the 10 percent law they're talking here 10 percent law which we'll be learning later on cool amazing all of you are any doubt here students let me ask let me look at the hello sir i'm from karnataka amazing 
यू कैन कम एंड मीट एस एनी टाइम यू कैन कम एस मीट एस एनी टाइम आई मीन बैंगलोर ऑल द टाइम आई मीन बैंगलोर हियर ओके सो एनी डाउट हियर स्टूडेंट्स एनी डाउट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर पैराग्राफ और द डायग्राम और द डायग्राम एंड एनी डाउट इन द डायग्राम एनी डाउट इन दिस टू पैराग्राफ नो डाउट अमेजिंग दैट्स हाउ यू लर्न दैट्स हाउ यू लर्न सी इफ आई वेर टू रीड द एंटायर थिंग वुड यू रिमेंबर वुड यू अंडरस्टैंड इफ आई रेड द एंटायर थिंग you will be like no sir something can get confusing the reason i'm asking you to read with the help of diagram you will understand it better remember it better okay cool amazing now question let's solve some question now so much of energy i spent so much of energy i gave you now you give me back some energy now ask the doubts ask the doubts i will solve this question match the column 1 with the column 2 and identify the correct option they are given you column 1 different types of ecosystem you need to identify which type is which one okay ask right i'll give you 10 seconds no 20 seconds take 20 seconds you are being go all of your code good friend take 20 seconds so students remember here your natural ecosystem which is natural here natural terrestrial which is terrestrial here terrestrial is nothing but natural is your desert yes one is sea then what about your fresh ecosystem fresh water is nothing but your pond so two is fresh fresh ecosystem is your pond yes ecosystem is pond then anthropogenic means man made man made three is your crop field and marine is your ocean done next question the energy enters an ecosystem through which is the first energy is entering into the ecosystem how is the energy entering into the ecosystem with the help of tell me first now students i want your marks everyone when i am giving you a question see we have lot of questions today we have lot of questions today every single time i'm giving you a question i want marks write your marks next to your name next to your name i should see plus 4 or plus 8 or plus 20 okay sir if newton cycle is happening won't it be bidirectional students uh, i can't i can't see the name it is a cycle bidirectional is going this way bidirectional is this way this is actually a cycle it is going as a cycle okay see energy is unidirectional nutrients is cyclic okay so energy is entering through producers because producers are able to producers are able to do photosynthesis yes hello shweta prasad next question look at the image given below diagram based question look at the image given below and identify the represented structural features of the ecosystem quickly tell me in the chat which type of ecosystem is this which type of ecosystem ecosystem is this i want to see your marks everyone write down your marks next to your name plus 4 plus 8 tell me in the chat and remember your marks i can't remember here okay look at the image tell me is it a tropic system is it a species composition is it a food chain or is it stratification is this a stratification tell me quickly can you see vertical distribution we have the trees then we have the shrubs then we have the herbs then we have the grasses this is called as this is called as vertical distribution that is nothing but your stratification that is nothing but stratification clear any doubt your students varshiti kushi anyone preeti any doubt here amazing now we will start productivity now we will start productivity now can we start can we start productivity now yes students we can start productivity all of you drink some water all of you drink some water every 45 minutes every 30 minutes i want everyone to drink some water all of you drink some water right now okay now let's understand productivity show me some josh in the chat green hearts in the chat and we will start productivity now now productivity a constant a constant input of solar energy a constant input of solar energy is the basic requirement for any ecosystem to function and sustain is this line true or false is this line true or false tell me in the chat right now that is a constant supply of solar energy is the basic requirement for any ecosystem is it for all the ecosystem in the world i'll change the line i'll change the line solar radiation 
is the basic requirement in all the ecosystems is it the basic requirement in all the ecosystems if it is all the ecosystem it is false why because there is an ecosystem called as your geothermal ecosystem in the case of your geothermal ecosystem in the case of geothermal in the case of geothermal ecosystem sun is not the basic requirement sun is not the basic requirement in the case of geothermal ecosystem we have different types of source of heat there okay not all now requirement primary production listen to my words listen to my words primary production is defined as the amount amount of biomass or organic matter produced per unit area over a period of time by plants during photosynthesis that is called as your primary productivity just like how your dad is making the money your dad is bringing the money or mom is bringing the money into the house just your plants are also bringing the organic matter plants are producing organic matter in a unit area in a given time one year two year three year that is called as primary production so what is primary production repeat after me students primary production is defined as the amount of biomass what is biomass basically in your body remove all the water what are you left with that is biomass that is the amount of biomass or organic matter produced per unit area this is important per unit area in a given amount of time or a period of time by the plants during photosynthesis is called as primary production clear amazing it is expressed in two ways primary production can be expressed in two different ways that is nothing primary production can be expressed in two different manners one is your weight other one is energy primary production can be expressed in weight primary production can be expressed in the form of energy clear now this is very important it is expressed in terms of weight that is grams per meter square or energy that is kilocalorie per meter square so the primary production how much a plant is producing how much is a plant is making glucose that can be expressed in two ways that is weight repeat after me repeat after me the first one is weight second one is energy weight is expressed by your gram per meter square energy is expressed by expressed by repeat after me energy is expressed by kilocalories per meter square done now why is it meter square here because over a unit area and time period clear now students now your dad is bringing the money into the house does your parents get the salary monthly salary weekly or daily or monthly tell me in the chat right now your parents are getting the money into the house are they getting the money daily into the house or weekly into the house or monthly into the house 90% of the cases is monthly that is i'm talking about rate of rate of money coming into your house the rate of photosynthesis the time period it is taking the rate at which the photosynthesis is taking that is called as productivity that is called as productivity the rate of biomass production at what rate it is happening at what rate it is happening is called as productivity see this just like your parents how they are bringing the money into the house monthly daily or weekly your plants are also doing photosynthesis over a period of time that is rate of biosynthesis is called as productivity so rate is productivity production is called as primary production for doing photosynthesis over a period of time and area is called as primary production the rate at which it is happening the rate at which it is happening that is called as productivity it is expressed in the terms of grams per meter square can you see per year so how your parents are doing per day per month or weekly your plants are we are calculating here plants we are calculating here per year can you see this is how you remember this is how you remember if it is per year it is productivity okay or this is in terms of weight kilocalorie per meter square per year can you see 
this is in terms of energy so how will you identify the formula if it is if it is productivity you need to see the time period there that is year okay to compare the productivity of different ecosystems so what is the use of productivity the use of productivity is to compare the productivity of different ecosystems it can be divided into gross primary productivity now again your parents are, are well, let's, let's not take parents, let's take someone from the, let's take someone from the chat, let's take Sanvi, okay, Sanvi's monthly salary, Sanvi's monthly salary is 1 lakh, Sanvi's monthly salary, not much, sorry, yearly, monthly has become too expensive, Sanvi's yearly salary is 1 lakh, Sanvi's yearly salary is 1 lakh, now the company is telling, the company is telling, I will be giving you 1 lakh per year or per month. Okay, say so take it as per month only. Take it as per month only. Per month, Sanvi is getting 1 lakh. But when the company is actually giving you the money, company is not giving you 1 lakh. Company is not giving you 1 lakh. Company is actually giving you 90,000. The company is actually giving you 90,000. The 10,000, 10, the company, company cut the 10,000. Company cut the 10,000 and gave you 90,000, gave you 90,000. So this 1 lakh here, the 1 lakh here becomes what? The 1 lakh here becomes the gross primary productivity, the total. And this 90,000, this 90,000 after cutting the tax and everything becomes your net primary productivity. Net primary productivity. If you want to talk in terms of, if you want to talk in terms of your plants, Plants are actually making, listen to me very carefully, plants are actually making, imagine, a plant is making 1000 molecules of glucose, a plant is making 1000 molecules of glucose, out of this 1000 molecules of glucose, plants is using, plants is using 90% of it, plant is using 90% of it, that is 900 molecules of glucose is used by plant for respiration for respiration now what is left here what is left here is just 100 molecules of glucose is left here 100 molecules of glucose is left here and this thousand which is made by the plant this is your gpp gross primary productivity which is plant is making now this which is available the 10 100 molecules of glucose the 100 molecules of glucose which is available for rest of the organisms this is your npp this is your NPP, net primary productivity, net primary productivity, clear? Let's see the NCRT. It can be divided into gross primary productivity and net primary productivity. The gross primary productivity of an ecosystem is rate of production of organic matter. At what rate a particular plant is making organic matter? For example, the plant is making 1000 molecules of glucose during the photosynthesis so during photosynthesis how much the plant is making that is your gross primary productivity a considerable amount of gpp is utilized by the plant plant is using some gpp yes for respiration i told you already so the gross primary productivity minus the respiration what plant is using respiration loss is the net primary productivity the answer was 100 there that is net pri net primary productivity so gpp minus r what is r r is nothing but respiration gives us the npp gives us the net primary productivity clear now let's take someone else whom should i take from the whom should i take from the chat now anyone whose name should i take from the chat who should i take now Let's see Akash. Let's take Akash now. Akash is going and asking Sanvi. Sanvi, can you please give me, can you please give me 50,000 rupees? Yes. Sa Akash is going and telling Sanvi, can I please get 50,000 rupees? Now, you tell me in the chat, if salary, uh, salary, now, can Akash, can Akash take money from, totally money from 1 lakh? Can you take money from the 1 lakh deposit? No. Akash will be only be able to take money from where? From this 90,000. Akash will be able to take only and only money from 
this 90,000, that is a consumer, Akash is like the consumer, consumers will be able to take money from the NPP. Consumers will be able to take where? Consumers will be able to take money from the NPP only. That was the answer to the question which I told you in the starting. Remember in the starting I told you? The NPP is available for, NPP is available for the consumers. Clear? Clear? Amazing. That's how you understand. That's how you understand. So, your consumers will be, which are dependent on the, which are dependent on the producers, will be able to take money, will be able to take organic matter only and only from NPP, that is 90,000 here. They cannot take from the GPP directly. Okay? Now, any doubt here students? Any doubt here? I believe there is no doubt here. I believe there is no doubt here. Okay? Now, the net primary productivity is available. I told you, NPP is available biomass for the consumption of heterotrophs. Heterotrophs. What are heterotrophs? Heterotrophs are type of consumers which eat the herbivores. That is your Akash right here. Akash is taking the and they are taking the organic matter from NPP. Okay. And decomposers. The second productivity. Very important line. Very important line. Sir, what is R notion? R is nothing but iron. R, R is nothing but your respiration. Okay. Second productivity is defined by the rate of formation of new organic matter by the consumers. So, if I am giving, if I am giving, so if I am giving, Akash, 50,000 rupees. Will he keep the 50,000 in his pocket and travel around? No. What will Akash do? Akash will spend the money and give it to someone else. For example, he's giving, Akash is giving money to the Preeti now. Akash is giving money to the Preeti. Yes, that is your secondary productivity. That is your secondary productivity. That is, is defined as the rate of formation of new organic matter by the consumer. So, consumer is also making some product. Consumer is also making some product now. Yes, that is nothing but your secondary productivity. Akash is not keeping the money to himself. Akash is also giving the money to someone else. That is, consumer is also giving the organic matter to someone else. That is your secondary productivity. That is your secondary productivity. Understood? Did everyone understand? Any doubt here? Any doubt here? Any doubt here students? Any doubt here? Mm. Primary productivity is defined as the amount of biomass or organic matter available, available matter produced by the plants per unit area per unit time. The first line here is nothing but a constant input of solar energy. A constant input of solar energy is required basic unit for all the ecosystem. Okay. Now, see this is the definition. Can you see? What is primary production? The production of organic matter, biomass by, a, by photosynthesis is called as primary production. This is for all the board students. And this is very important. What is primary productivity? Amount of biomass produced per unit area over a period of time by the plants is given by primary productivity. Okay? Expressed in terms of year. Secondary productivity is a rate of formation of new organic matter by secondary consumers or the consumers in general. Or consumers in general. So, consumers are making some productivity. That is your secondary productivity. Then, primary productivity depends on the plant species. Why? Because plant species are autotropes. They can prepare their own food. Yes. Uh, plant species inhabiting a particular area. It is also depends on the variety. Okay, this is very important. Mm. Right on this. Right on this point here. Factors affecting primary productivity. Right on this point here. Right on this point all of you. 
factors affecting primary productivity it's here it's here it's here write down factors affecting primary productivity point number 1 the point number 1 is nothing but plant species point number 1 is nothing but plant species which type of plant species are there is it trees shrubs herbs is it a cactus so plant species depending upon the plant species primary productivity can change can vary true for example you have a coconut tree and a big banyan tree which plant will have more primary productivity tell me in the chat will it be the coconut tree or will it be the banyan tree obviously the answer would be banyan tree so primary productivity can change based on the plant species okay the second one the second point here is the nutrients second point is the nutrients here depending upon the nutrients for example one area has too much of nutrients for example a forest will have too much of nutrients yes so productivity will increase there what about a desert desert has less nutrients so less productivity desert has less nutrients less productivity okay the third point here is photosynthesis photosynthetic capacity capacity of plants photosynthetic capacity of plants students i am making you write this i why am i making you write this i want everyone to keep a small book write down this point or sticky notes and stick it on your ncert okay let's read now plant plant species inhabiting a particular area it is also depends on variety of environmental factors that is it could be a snow region in snow region productivity is less again availability of nutrients and photosynthetic capacity of the plant so what are the factors affecting primary productivity is plant species nutrients and photosynthetic capacity this nutrients is nothing but the environment factors therefore in it varies in different types of ecosystem different type of ecosystem in different types of ecosystem different types of productivity is there okay the annual net prime very important line all of you attention all of you attention please all of you all of you take attention all of you take attention here the annual ne net primary productivity of the whole biosphere is approximately 170 billion tons of dry weight of organic matter 170 billion tons despite occupying about 70 percent of the surface despite having the 70 percent surface 170 billion tons of primary productivity is there the productivity of the ocean sorry this is not this is oh, this is a different line sorry 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 here this 70 percent that is ocean the oceans are taking up 70 percent of the earth despite taking the 70 percent of the earth's entire sir you know area oceans oceans are oceans pr primary productivity is only 55 billion tons so you can tell me which which ecosystem is it which ecosystem has more primary productivity it is terrestrial over ecosystem terrestrial terrestrial is more than your ocean ecosystem terrestrial more than ocean ecosystem terrestrial is more than ocean ecosystem sometimes canada comes out see mother tongue is is right around the corner mother tongue always comes out like instantly sometimes but right now i'm speaking in english okay so oh, terrestrial ecosystem has terrestrial ecosystem has more primary productivity compared to oceans okay now can we start decomposition now decomposition students your chapter is getting over do you realize your chapter is getting over productivity is done the entire productivity is done now the entire productivity is done okay so can we start decomposition tamil uh, i have tried you know i have tried tamil so like wanna come and all i have tried but it gets difficult okay so can we start now can we start let me see the phone so all of you drink, drink some water all of you drink some water quickly quickly all of you drink some water and we can start with the 
Yes. Now I'll tell you. I'll tell you what is productivity. I'll give you one example. Productivity. In the starting we had. I'll give, tell me answer this question. In the starting we had more students. All of you were productive that time. Tell me whose productivity is higher now. Who are watching the video right now. Who has more productivity. Who are watching the video right now. Or who left in the middle. Tell me who has more productivity. The who was watching video right now or the students who left before? You will tell me the students who are watching right on the video, who was learning, who is learning with me, who is understanding the every line of NCRT with me. They have more, they have more productivity. They have more productivity. All of you have more productivity compared to students who left. Compared to students who left, you have more productivity. So be happy. Okay. Now, you may have heard, all of you have heard. Who has all of you have heard? You may have heard of the earthworm, the small slimy slimy thing, small slimy 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 thing. You may have heard of the earthworm being referred to as the farmer's friend. Why is it farmer's friend? Because it helps in loosening the soil. It makes small small air pockets in the soil to make sure more oxygen is going into the soil. Yes. This is because they help in breaking down the complex organic matter. They help in what? They help in breaking the complex organic matter as well as loosening the soil. Similarly, decomposers break down complex organic matter. What do they do? What do they do? What do they do? Your decomposers will completely break down complex organic matter into inorganic matter that should get in your fixed in your brain see here in the case of decomposers in the case of decomposers it is always it is always complex organic matter into inorganic matter complex organic matter into inorganic matter remember this line remember this line it, it, they can give you an exam decomposers how do they function do they convert organic to inorganic, in, inorganic to organic, organic to organic or inorganic to inorganic? They can ask you a question like this to trick you. So your answer should be what? Your answer should be decomposers completely break down organic matter into inorganic matter. Clear? Amazing. Now, matter into inorganic substances like carbon, dioxide, water and nutrients and process is called as decomposition so conversion conversion from organic to inorganic by the decomposers is called as decomposition this is the definition for all the board students okay now dead plants plants are dying dead plants remains such as leaves bark flower and dead remains of animals dead remains of animals including the fecal matter, the waste, the fecal matter constitute the detritus. So this is where the new word comes in, detritus. Detritus is nothing but the mixture of the dead and decaying matter. It could be dead plants, flowers, fruit, bark, dead animals. All of this constitutes, all of this constitutes the detritus. All of this constitutes the detritus, which is the raw material for the decomposition this question can come all of you so what is the raw material what is the raw material for decomposition you should tell me dead letters is the raw material for decomposition done yes the important step in the process of decomposition sense are so there are many steps there are many steps in decomposition for example first one is your fragmentation the first one is fragmentation students pyqs alert students need pyq alert first one is your fragmentation second one is leaching third one is catabolism fourth one is humification and the fifth one is mineralization fifth one is mineralization repeat after me repeat after me all of you First one is fragmentation, second one is leaching, third one is catabolism, fourth one is humification, and the fifth one is and the fifth one is mineralization. Fifth one is nothing but mineralization. Done. Now I'll make you write down some points. Now, mm, where should I write? 
Then not leave a slide here. Ha, ah, slide is here. Okay. Let's reduce one line and write one line. Read one line, write one line. Detrivores. What are detrivores? Detrivores are decomposers. Detrivores, the earthworm, break down the detritus. Detrivores completely piece piece the detrivores. Detrivores completely piece piece the detritus. They completely break down the detritus into smaller particles. This process is called as fragmentation. So quickly write down what is fragmentation. The first part here is fragmentation. So what is happening in fragmentation? What is happening in fragmentation? Quickly tell me in the chat. Fragmentation is nothing but your detrivores like your earthworms are breaking the detritus. Detritus is breaking down into fragments. It is breaking down into fragments. Very important line. Okay. Next. By the process of leaching. The second one is your by the process of leaching. Water soluble in organic nutrients. By the process of leaching, water soluble inorganic, not organic, inorganic nutrients go down into the soil. They travel down the soil as precipitate and they are not available at all. Completely missing. You know, missing. Some go, some people go missing. This is that people, this is that person, they go missing. Whenever you require them, you're calling, bro, friend, will you come now? Will have a scene is there? You'll call someone. That person will never come. That is, they'll go missing. That is what is happening here. That is, water soluble inorganic nutrients go down into the soil horizon and get precipitated as unavailable salts. Completely as unavailable salts, complete absconding. Okay. So write down. Second one is your leaching. I'll write down here. Second one is your leaching. What is happening in leaching? In the leaching, what is happening? Tell me, repeat fast. In leaching, water, water, soluble, inorganic substances are getting precipitated into, into the soil horizon. Soil horizon and they are not available. They are completely not available at all as unavailable salts. They have gone to the soil as as unavailable unavailable salts. Done. Missing. Leaching is done. Next point. Read with me. Bacterial and fungal enzymes. Listen to me. Bacterial and bacterial and fungal enzymes degrade detritus into simple inorganic substances. Very important now. Very important. This process is called as catabolism. What is catabolism? All of you tell me. What is catabolism? What is happening catabolism? In the catabolism, bacterial and enzymes, bacteria and enzymes are completely breaking down. Completely breaking down the inorganic substances here. Degrade the detritus into simple inorganic substances. That is detritus into inorganic substances. Inorganic substances. Inorganic substances. That is your catabolism. Now listen to me very carefully. Very carefully. Fragmentation. Fragmentation. Leaching. As well as your catabolism. Fragmentation, leaching and catabolism, all three processes are happening at the same time. They are happening simultaneously. They are happening what? Simultaneously. It is not like one after another. First fragmentation will happen, then leaching, then catabolism. No. They are happening simultaneously. Okay. See, if it is important to note that all the both steps are de the in decomposition, operate simultaneously on the detritus like you'll take one now uh, in body what do you do in body bumps in body bumps will one person one given kick and you'll go back no what do you do in body bumps you take one person and nicely all of you hit all together on the on the small body boy this body boy here is detritus 
बर्थडे बॉयज डेट लेटस इयर एंड ऑल द फ्रेंड्स आर हिटिंग हिम एट द सेम टाइम और हिटिंग हिम एट द सेम टाइम दैट इज ऑन द डेटरी वोर्स ऑन द डेटरीटस ऑल द डेटरी वोर्स आर वर्किंग साइमल्टेनियसली ऑल दिस रिएक्शन आर हैपनिंग साइमल्टेनियसली द नेक्स्ट वन द नेक्स्ट वन इज ह्यूमिफिकेशन The next one is humification. A humification and mineralization. Humification and mineralization occur during the decomposition. During the decomposition in the soil, humification leads to accumulation of dark. Very important. PYQ alert. PYQ alert. All of you. Humification leads to the accumulation of dark. Dark. Amorphous. What is amorphous? Opposite of crystalline, like your almost solid liquid condition, like a colloidal substance. Amorphous substance called as humus. Is it humus or humus? Humus. It is a dark amorphous structure called as humus, not humus. Humus is the eating thing which you which you eat with pita bread. That is humus. This is humus. Now this is a highly resistant to microbial action. very important point very 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 important point highly resistant to microbial action previous year question neat and undergoes decomposition at extremely slow rate very slow decomposition being colloidal in nature it is colloidal in nature it serves as a reservoir of nutrients there are lot of nutrients here lot of nutrients this humus is further degraded by some microbes and release of inorganic nutrients occur by process of mineralization occur by mineralization write down the points write down the points here write down the points so what happens in your humification in the case of humification there is formation of a dark there is formation of a dark color a amorphous substance called as your humus this humus has many properties this humus has many properties first one is what the first one is your highly resistant highly highly resistant to microbial microbial action micro this is like your hero It is standing there. Whatever you come, you throw at me. It will be like I'll stand here only. I will not move. Any kind of microbial action, it is very resistant, like a hero. Okay. Apart from that, it decomposition. Apart from that, decomposition. Decomposition is very slow. Microbial this de it does not decompose very fast. Very slow decomposition. Very slow decomposition. Now this particular. humus does it have nutrients yes sir it is very rich in nutrients it is very rich in nutrients clear did i miss any point did i miss out any point undergoes my decomposition very slowly microbial action being see it's colloidal in nature let me tell that also it is colloidal in nature it is colloidal in nature colloidal in nature that is humification now after humification what do we have that is this is the humus is further degraded by the some microbes and release of inorganic nutrients occurs by mineralization the last point is mineralization the last point here is mineralization in a mineralization the humus gets converted to complete inorganic substances complete inorganic substances complete inorganic substances clear all of these points are clear now this is also very important this paragraph is very important very important very important very 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 important paragraph at least 3 or 4 P previous year need questions have come from this paragraph. This paragraph right here, at least three to four different types of questions have come from here. So please write down. Please write down this one. This paragraph is very very important. That is write down here. Let me use a different color. Color color which color here? 
फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग डीकम्पोजिशन फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग डीकम्पोजिशन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट आर द डिफरेंट फैक्टर्स विच आर यू विच आर इन्वॉल्व इन द डीकम्पोजिशन राइट डाउन वन बाय वन राइट डाउन वन बाय वन द फर्स्ट वन हियर द फर्स्ट वन हियर फर्स्ट पॉइंट वट इज द फर्स्ट पॉइंट हियर द रेट ऑफ डीकम्पोजिशन इज कंट्रोल्ड बाय केमिकल कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ डेटरेटस द फर्स्ट वन हियर इज नथिंग बट द फर्स्ट वन हियर इज केमिकल केमिकल कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ केमिकल कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ डेटरेटस दैट इज द फर्स्ट पॉइंट हियर यस एंड क्लाइमेटिक फैक्टर्स द सेकेंड वन इज क्लाइमेटिक फैक्टर्स सेकेंड वन इज नथिंग बट योर क्लाइमेटिक फैक्टर्स एंड दिस क्लाइमेटिक फैक्टर्स आर वॉट दिस क्लाइमेटिक फैक्टर्स कुड बी लाइक इन स्नो एरिया Tell me, you know, right? The dead bodies in the snow area do they decompose faster or slower? In the in the slow area, the decomposition is very very slow. Decomposition is very slow in the snow region. What about in forest? In forest, when temperature is more, which is more humid, in forest decomposition will happen very fast. Decomposition will happen very fast. That is your climatic factors. In a particular climatic condition, decomposition rate is, is slower if dead rate is rich in lignin and chitin. Very, very, very important factors. In your climatic factors, in your climatic factors, if the dead rate is, if the dead rate is, where is it? I have to write the exact line here. If the dead rate is is rich in what? If the dead rate is is rich in chitin and lignin if that is rich in lignin as well as chitin as well as chitin in this case right here in this case right here the decomposition is very slow decomposition is slow decomposition is very slow here decomposition is very slow here okay no rate is slower if no and quicker if detritus is rich in nitrogen and water soluble substances like sugar now quickly tell me in the chat one or two examples of one or two examples of what sugar are they talking here what sugar are they talking here quickly tell me in the chat the fourth point here is fourth point here is if detritus is rich in nitrogen nitrogen as well as nitrogen as well as sugar the decomposition will happen in a much more faster way that is sir what is colloidal in nature the meaning of colloidal here is it is a mixture all of you know chemistry colloidal substance is a mixture yes it is a mixture so that's why detritus is a mixture of things humus or humus is a mixture of things that is why it is rich in nutrients different types of nutrients are coming together colloidal in nature now temperature and soil moisture the fifth point here temperature and soil moisture soil moisture temperature and soil moisture are most important climatic factors that regulate the decomposition through their effective uh, uh, through through their effects on the activities of soil microbes warm and moist environment that is here warm and moist warm and moist will decomposition it will happen what in warm and moist condition decomposition will increase whenever whenever there is warm and moist condition in the temperature and moisture warm the decomposition rate will increase okay decomposition rate will completely increase the factors decomposition rate are okay it favors the decomposition whereas low temperature the sixth point here is low temperature the sixth point here is low temperature sixth point here is low temperature and low temperature and anaerobiosis 
लो टेम्परेचर एंड एन एरोबियोसिस वॉट इज एन एरोबियोसिस एन एरोबियोसिस इज अ कंडीशन एन एरोबियोसिस इज अ कंडीशन वेर दर इज ऑक्सीजन इज ऑक्सीजन इज नॉट प्रेजेंट ऑक्सीजन इज नॉट प्रेजेंट और ऑक्सीजन इज वेरी लेस इन दो कंडीशन वेन लो टेम्परेचर वेन लो टेम्परेचर टोल्ड यूर ऑल्सो टोल्ड यूर ऑल्सो इन स्नो कंडीशन इन लो टेम्परेचर एंड एनरोबिक कंडीशन द डी कंपोजिशन द डी कंपोजिशन बिकम्स स्लो दट इज इनहेबिट द डी कंपोजिशन रिजल्टिंग इन बिल्ड अप ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिक मैटर बिल्ड अप ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिक मैटर क्लियर क्लियर ऑलमोस्ट आई टेक अनाउंड ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स अदर फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स चैप्टर इज डन नेक्स्ट फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स चैप्टर विल बी डन आफ्टर दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सॉल्व पी वाई क्यूज बेस्ड ऑन दिस चैप्टर यू कैन स्टे वी विल इंक्रीज मोर will to learn more clear any doubt here students this paragraph is very important telling you very very important paragraph lot of questions lot of questions have come from this paragraph lot of questions have come from this paragraph so that is why see i could have read it i could have just told you one by one i could have told you the reason i made you write down the reason i made you write down every point here is it is very important it is very very important okay now next this is your entire nutrient so this is your entire decomposition for example we have ha huh, tree tree is here yes tree is here a leaf is falling on the ground some of the eaten by the insects and other uh, and other nutrients enter into the food web entering the food web some nutrients le uh, leach into this is your fragmentation this is your fragmentation then we have the some this is your leaching directly go as unavailable salts leaching then we have what then we have your catabolism for the decomposition by earthworms bacteria fungal and mites then we have humification leaves partially consumed decompose such as fungi bacteria they begin to lose from the uh, loose form and become lighter humification finally we have the before then we have your mineralization finally we have the minerals here like mg2 plus calcium and other nitrogen all these minerals are again taken up by the plant they are again taken up by the plant sir again taken up by the plant and plants is absorbing everything plants is absorbing everything and again the cycle continues again cycle continues okay now let's have some questions Let's solve some questions quickly in the chat. Let's see who is the first person to answer. Let's see who is the first person to answer. Are you calling me samosa? Are you calling me? Hey, are you? Are you calling me samosa or bonda? What is this? What is this, students? You are calling me samosa and all this. Oof! So much of hard work I'm teaching you ecology, making it interesting. Decomposers play an important role in the ecosystem by degrading the dead organic matter. Dead or uh, degrading the dead organic matter. What will be the possible effects if they are removed from the ecosystem? What will happen if they are removed from the ecosystem, sir? What is the meaning by anaerobiosis? Anaerobiosis means it is a it is a it is a place. It is a place where the entire oxygen is not there if there is no oxygen will the aerobic bacteria will be perform will can they perform de decomposition no okay what is the answer 10 seconds 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 times up the answer is obviously if there is no decomposition minerals will be trapped in the dead organism it is trapped in the dead organism and that is why that is why decomposition is important for the cycle to happen okay next question which of the following factors does not does not affect the rate of decomposition of organic matter tell me quickly in the chat marks i need marks yes sweetie you, you, you almost forgot tell me the marks all of you Tell me the marks, all of you. Option number A, option B, C. Ten seconds. Ten seconds, which does not affect the photosynthesis. So it does not affect the decomposition. Ten, nine, 
एट सेवन सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन टाइम्स अप दैट इज फोटो सिंथेटिक एबिलिटी ऑफ प्रोड्यूसर्स हाउ डज इट मैटर हाउ डज इट मैटर फोटो सिंथेटिक प्लांट्स इट डज नॉट मैटर एट ऑल यस ओनली थिंग विच मैटर इज एनरोस environmental temperature and chemical components of the detritus and all of us know all of us know how they play a role do they decrease the decomposition or they increase the decomposition all of you know that amazing now can we start energy flow can we start with energy flow tell me in the chat can we start with energy flow all of you are on point today be for balloon yes be for balloon <laughs> can we start now now students till now till now if you are understanding the concepts if you are able to understand the concepts and understand the every line of ncert everyone like the video right now everyone like the video right now like the video and also a quick green hearts in the chat can show it will show me some botany love towards all of you will show the botany love and do not forget to share do not forget to share the session also okay share session as much as possible you can share the session on the instagram you can share the session on the instagram and also tag me there you, you know all of you know my instagram id all of you know by now so go i have made see i made my account public i was very shy i was very shy i made the account public also so students all you can do is tag the share the session share the session on instagram tag me there okay now energy flow except first line here i told you told you sir here except for the deep sea hydrothermal ecosystem except for the deep sea hydrothermal ecosystem sun is the only source of energy for all ecosystem on earth did i tell you this line before did i tell you this line before i told you i told you this yes of the incident radiation out of the incident radiation that is what we are getting from the sun out of the incident radiation less than 50% out of the incident radiation only and only 50% of its or more than less than 50% of its photosynthetically active radiation so out of the this is the sun out of all the solar radiation out of all the solar radiation only and only 50% 50% can be used by the plants that radiation is called as par photosynthetically active radiation now quickly tell me in the chat what is the wavelength at which plants can absorb the light tell me in the chat at what wavelength this par at what wavelength can plants absorb the light tell me i told you already photosynthesis in higher plants i told you it is between your 400 to 700 nanometer 400 to 700 nanometer that is nothing but this is your blue region and this is the red region this is the photosynthetically this is nothing but the photosynthetically active radiation this is what is called as photosynthetically active radiation it is a radiation where plants can absorb they can absorb but will they absorb that is a different question they can absorb but will they absorb then let's learn in the next line let's learn in the next line that one we know that what do we know we know that plants and plants we know that plants and photosynthetically bacteria photosynthetic bacteria autotrophs basically all the autotrophs fix sun's radiant energy radiant energy to make food for simple from they make the food from simple inorganic ma material remember students in case of photosynthesis in the case of photosynthesis it is inorganic to organic remember this point always it's always inorganic to organic in the case of photosynthesis it fix sun's radiant energy to make food from simple inorganic matter plants capture plants capture only 2 to 10% of par so when the sun is radiating radiation out of the total radiation only 50% can be can be absorbed by the plants 
out of this 50 percent only 2 to 10 percent only 2 to 10 percent is absorbed is utilized by the plant out of this 50 percent out of this 50 percent par only only and only 2 to 10 percent is used by the plants rest they're like nope i will not do so much of work if i ask you to if i ask you to like the video if i ask you to comment you'll be like no i will not comment that is you are like you are like plants all of you are like plants 2 to 10 percent of par and this small amount of energy sustains the entire living world just this 2 to 10 percent is sustaining the entire world because we as humans we as consumers we are directly or indirectly dependent on plants we are dependent on plants okay so it is very important to know that how the solar energy captured by the plants flow through the different organisms of an ecosystem right all organisms are see i told you all organisms are dependent for their food on producers we are dependent on the producers for all the food directly or indirectly either directly see here or directly or indirectly so if you find a unit so you find unidirectional flow of energy again important line you find unidirectional flow of energy from the sun from the sun to plants plants to herbivores herbivores to carnivores unidirectional flow of energy from the sun see here sun to producers and then to the consumers and then to the consumers understood the line done all of you now understand this line now further ecosystems are not exempted ha ha physics now all of you physics very stress stress will ask this question now further ecosystems are not exempted from the second law of thermodynamics oh here i have missed one line here this is kept uh, this is keeping using the first law of thermodynamics now what is the first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics is nothing but energy cannot be created nor be destroyed it can be transferred from one per next one per one tropic level to next tropic level here okay from one substance to other substance now here furthermore ecosystem is not exempted from the second law of thermodynamics now i do not know thermodynamics that much actually i know because i have done masters in chemistry um, undergraduate in chemistry so chemistry also we learn thermodynamics now what is the second law of thermodynamics second law of thermodynamics is telling you that the randomness the randomness called as entropy the randomness called as entropy is actually increasing the randomness or the entropy of the universe is actually increasing and the final entropy the final entropy is always more than the initial entropy yes that is your second law of thermodynamics that is your second law of thermodynamics that is your final entropy is always greater final randomness in the universe is always greater than the initial randomness initial entropy okay the law of thermodynamics they need to they need they need a constant supply of energy to synthesize the molecules they require to counter the universe tendency towards the increasing disorderness disorder what is this disorder this is your entropy this is your entropy right here okay the green plants in the ecosystem are called as your producers all of you know the green plants are called as your producers in a terrestrial ecosystem in a terrestrial land ecosystem the major producers are your herbaceous obviously who are the producers producers are your plants green plants algae and everything and woody plants likewise in producers in the aquatic ecosystem in the aquatic ecosystem they are the various species like phytoplanktons algae and higher plants okay clear so uh, let me write down here producers in the case of your terrestrial in the case of terrestrial is nothing but your herbaceous plant herbaceous plant and woody plants woody plants and 
in the case of aquatic ecosystem in the case of aquatic ecosystem it is nothing but your phytoplanktons algae and higher plants and also certain higher plants when i say higher plants i mean what do i mean do i mean gymnosperms or angiosperms the higher plants here are the angiosperms okay now you ha have heard have you heard you have heard the food chain and food web all of you have heard what is food chain what is food web that exists in the nature starting from plants starting from plants that are your producers food chain starting from starting from the plants food chain or or rather food webs are formed such that an animal feeds on the plants or on on another animals and in turn is in turn is food for another i'll listen to me listen to me we have plants producers that is your plants i if i am a vegetarian i will go eat the plant i am the primary consumer i am a herbivores now if you have a chicken chicken is also eating a plant now some of you are non vegetarians what will you do i am also non vegetarian i will eat a chicken so i am what i am doing i am also eating the other organism that is basically a food chain where energy is being transferred energy is being transferred from one organism to the next organism okay that is formed that such, such that an animal feeds on a plant herbivores or an or on another animal that is your carnivores and in in turn is food for another that is the carnivores the primary consumer or the primary carnivore that is your deer here for example that will be eaten by lion again they telling that the chain or web the chain or web is formed because of this interdependency that is we are depending on other organism that other organism is also depending on other organism that independency causes the food chain clear no energy that is trapped in an organism remains it forever so if i have the energy inside me it will not remain forever some day the energy will be sent to someone else that is if a, in case of humans humans if the some human is dying the energy which was there in the human is sent to the detrivores yes energy transfer is happening the energy trapped by the producers hence it is either passed on to the consumers the plants will send the energy to the consumers or the organism will die or the organism will die when the organism dies is the energy stopping there no when the, even when the organism is dying that time the energy is sent to the detrivores death of the organism is the beginning death of the organism is just the beginning of the detrivores food chain or food web that is the starting point okay clear all of you clear with this point here yes no yes no tell me now <clears throat> attention all of your attention here i want ultimate focus now ultimate focus i have your focus right all animals all animals depend on plants yes directly or indirectly directly or indirectly for their food mate food needs they are hence called as consumers that is we as consumers are eating the other plants that is your producers and also heterotrophs we are called as heterotrophs clear if they feed on producers the plants they are called as primary consumers now what is a primary consumer right with me first we have the primary consumer first we have the primary consumer primary consumer <coughs> prime <coughs> sorry 
primary consumer is directly eating the plants can we call them herbivores can we call them herbivores written somewhere should i use the extra word or no never mind they are called as herbivores they are called as herbivores they are called as primary consumers are the herbivores these are the vegetarians these are the vegetarians okay these are the vegetarians then we have the secondary consumers then we have the secondary consumers the secondary consumers are the animals are the animals these animals are actually eating the plants not are eating the plants they can eat the plants but in this case here in this case here secondary consumers or the animals are eating the herbivores they are eating the herbivores clear the eating the herbivores we can call them carnivores also as well as omnivores these are like non veg people who eat non veg okay people who eat non veg are the secondary consumers i will drink some water just i'll finish this topic secondary consumers then we have the tertiary consumers we have the tertiary consumers then we also have quaternary consumers then we also have quaternary consumers are they also carnivores yes sir they are also carnivores these are called as top carnivores they are called as what top carnivores now here one question arises now here one question arises what is a primary carnivore what is a primary carnivore here the primary carnivore is nothing but here different color primary carnivore is nothing but here look at this <coughs> i'm writing carbohydrates i'm writing carbohydrates <laughs> primary carnivore here primary carnivores are your secondary consumers primary carnivores primary carnivores are your secondary consumers which are eating where the animals are eating the herbivores that is your primary carnivores do not do not forget this this is where so many students go wrong many 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 students go wrong here so remember students secondary consumers are your primary carnivores secondary consumers are what secondary consumers are primary carnivores now tell me in the chat which are your secondary consumers here the secondary consumers are your what the secondary consumers are secondary secondary carnivores are the secondary carnivores here are tertiary consumers this is what every student go wrong in this chapter students in this chapter everything is easy this is this is the very basic thing which everyone needs to understand okay please know this that is primary carnivores are your secondary consumers secondary carnivores are your tertiary consumers clear tell me this are you understanding this part if you are understanding this part entire chapter is easy the entire chapter is very easy after this understanding secondary carnivores are your tertiary consumers clear now this is what i want to teach you can we read the lines here yes sir so they are called as primary consumers can you see primary consumers are herbivores and if the animals eat the other animals if animals eat the other animals which in turn eat the plants for their or, or they produce they are called as secondary consumers so secondary consumers are the animals which eat other animals or they eat plants likewise you would have tertiary consumers too likewise you will have tertiary consumers quaternary consumers top consumers top carnivores obviously the primary consumer will be herbi herbivores so primary consumer will be herbivores some common herbivores are insects birds mammals in 
terrestrial ecosystem and mollusk in the aquatic ecosystem. Now, the, the consumer that feeds on the herbivores, the consumer which feeds on the herbivores are carnivores. The consumers which feed on the herbivores is called as carnivores. Is called as what? Carnivores. Or more correctly, primary carnivores. So, secondary consumer is also called as what? Carnivores or primary carnivores. Or they can be called as primary carnivores. Through the secondary consumers. Though the secondary consumers. So, secondary consumers are your primary carnivores. And those animals that depend on primary carnivores, the organisms which are depending on the primary carnivores for the food are labeled as secondary carnivores. So what are secondary carnivores? Secondary carnivores right here feed on, they feed on primary carnivores. Students, this can become a little confusing. So that is why I am making you write like this. So secondary carnivores feed on primary carnivores. A simple grazing food chain that is GFC that is nothing but grass food chain yes grazing so grazing food chain is depicted below so anyone anyone has any doubt here ask me right now any doubt in this paragraph here students let me tell you one thing now a small motivation time small motivation time listen to me very carefully your application is out. I have been getting a lot of questions regarding, Sir, NEET exam is so close by. NEET exam is so close by, I am getting scared. But I have told them one thing. Do not be scared right now. In fact, you need to be excited. Students, if you are not understanding a particular concept, watch the video again. If you are not understanding the concept again, watch the video second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. Until you understand the concept, keep on watching it. Even after watching the video, you do not understand the concept. Ask us, we are here to help you out. But please don't give up. Don't give up. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself right now that I will become a doctor and keep asking the doubts. Students, remember, sometimes some students can understand just by watching the video one time or reading one time. But not everyone is equal. So what you do need to do is read, read and write and watch the video over and over. But please keep challenging yourself. Okay? Keep challenging yourself. So if you do not understand this, Keep asking me. Do not understand this. Keep on asking me all your doubts. But understand this concept. Understand this concept, all of you. Okay? Understand this concept. Challenge yourself, all of you. Challenge yourself and do this. You can do this. Challenge yourself that you will become a doctor. Okay? Now, this is a particular food chain given here. Yes, a food chain is given here. That is your grass is a producer. Then we have goat primary consumer then we have your man that is secondary consumer secondary consumer is also called as secondary consumer is also called as what your secondary consumer is also called as your primary carnivores primary carnivores this is very important students So please exp explain that why ecosystem are not exempted from your second law of thermodynamics. Second law of thermodynamics is saying that entropy is increasing. Entropy is randomness is increasing. Yes, in the universe. Just like how randomness is increasing. Your ecosystem is also increasing. That is, if within an ecosystem, within an ecosystem, photosynthesis is happening all the time. So can I tell, within the photosynthesis happening, are we adding more and more organic matter into it? Yes, we are adding more and more organic matter rate. Clear? <clears throat> so, can you explain how secondary consumers are primary carnivores? If they eat plants, if they, if they eat plant carnivores, what did plant? See, NCR is clearly telling you, secondary consumers are the animals. They are the animals which are eating the herbivores. They are eating the herbivores. Or... If they're eating plant products, see they're saying or option. So don't worry, don't don't worry about the or option. Remember on the carnivores. When I when I say carnivores word, will you think about a goat or will you think about a lion? You will think about a lion only, right? That is what they're trying to tell you here. That is what they're trying to tell you here. Okay, that is secondary consumer are the animals also called as your carnivores. 
which eat the herbivores, which eat the herbivores. Now, listen to me very carefully now. Listen to me very, very carefully. A dead redus food chain, DFC, a dead redus food chain, also called as your DFC, begins with the dead organic matter. Yes, in the case of detritus food chain, it is starting with dead and decaying matter. It is made up of decomposers. We already know that. Which are heterotrophic mode of nutrition, which is saprotrophs here. Mainly fungi and bacteria. So in the case of your detritus food chain, in the case of your detritus food chain, we mainly have the fungus or bacteria. They meet their energy and nutrient requirements by degrading the dead organic matter or detritus or detritus now these are also known as saprotrophs all of you know what is saprotrophs saprotrophs are the organisms which feed on dead and decaying matter decomposers secrete digestive enzymes that break down the dead and waste material into simple inorganic material which are subsequently absorbed by them okay so in a eco this is important now in an ecosystem in an aquatic ecosystem in an aquatic read with me all of you read with me in an aquatic ecosystem gfc grazing food chain is major conduct for energy flow in an aquatic ecosystem the major conduct of you know nutrient cycle is happening because of GFC. As against this, in terrestrial ecosystem, a much more larger fraction of energy flows through the dead food chain. Through the dead food chain. Clear? So, in the case of your aquatic, in the case of aquatic, in the case of aquatic ecosystem, the major flow is happening between grazing food chain. In your terrestrial, in the case of terrestrial, we have major energy flow. The main major energy flow is happening through the dead red food chain. Happening through the dead red food chain. Yes, yes, Sharat, yes. Yes, yes. Sharat, yes. Sir, we have so many pages. Don't worry. See, I am here to teach you. All you need to do is sit and learn with me. Remember, ecological succession is over. It is removed. Nutrient cycle is removed. So, only concept after this, you have the ecological pyramids. Done and dusted after that. Right? Through the GFC. Dead readers food chain may be connected with, oh, very important. Your grazing food chain. Yes, the dead readers food chain may be connected to the grazing food chain. So, GFC is connected to DFC. Grazing food chain is connected to dead readers food chain. Yes, your grazing food chain is connected to detritus food chain. Uh, some of the organisms of DFC are prey to the GFC animals. And in natural ecosystem, some animals like cockroach, crow, etc. are omnivores. These natural interconnection, that is a connection between, that is a connection between grazing food chain and detritus food chain is called as food web is called as food web so what is a food web food web is nothing but interconnection of food chain what is a food chain we have to a food chain here we have gfc and dfc when they are interconnected they make the food web they make the food web okay organisms occupy a place in the natural surroundings yes all of us have a place in the surrounding. All of us have a place in surrounding. I am standing here, you are sitting there. All of us have a place in surrounding. Or in a community. Like all of you have a place in community. For example, for example, in the case of your classroom. In the case of classroom, we have first bencher, middle bencher, last bencher. Yes, that is different, different levels are there. According to there. Now, but are we talking about this first bencher, second bencher, last bencher here? No. We are talking about your classification based on the eating pattern. That is, first benchers will not eat until where? Interval. Middle benchers will open the tiffin in the middle of the class. Last benchers, last bencher will finish the tiffin as soon as they come to school only. 
Do you know that? Last benches will finish their food as soon as they come to the school. Middle benches will eat during the class. First benches will sit and listen to the class. Okay. Just like that we have the tropic level here. Right. Where was I? A natural surroundings or in a community according to their feeding relationships with other organisms. Based on the source of their nutrition or food. Organism... <coughs> Organism occupy a specific place in a food chain. So what is the food web? Food web is nothing but food web is nothing. Food chain is the sorry tropic level. Tropic level is nothing but a position of a organism in a food chain. Your first bencher, second bencher, last bencher. That is a tropic level. That is a tropic level. Okay. So what is the tropic level? Tropic level is nothing but position of a organism in a food chain. In a food chain producers belong to the first tropic level herbivores are primary consumers to the second and carnivores to the carnivores or secondary consumers to the third okay sir are you first bencher or last bencher middle bencher i used to sit on uh, third bench or oh, second bench sometimes the reason i used to sit on second bench second bench is because first bench will have all the chalk dust will come remember if you sit on the first bench or second bench the chalk dust might come so i'll start sneezing so i have to be smart so what you used to do don't sit on first bench second on sit on second or third bench if you sit on second bench or third bench chalk dust will not come out back bench back bench say noise also not coming out so that's the best place to sit that is the best place to sit is the second or third bench okay the important point to note is that the amount of energy decrease very important point very important point the amount the important point to note that is the amount of energy decreases at successive tropic level so when we go from one tropic level to the next tropic level the energy is what increasing no the energy is decreasing the energy is decreasing when any organism dies it is converted to the dead retus or dead, dead biomass that serves as the energy source for the decomposers organisms at each tropic level depend on those at lower tropic level for their energy demands obviously higher tropic level depend on the lower tropic level for the energy demand for example the lowest is your plants the first tropic level is the plants which we all depend on okay clear no, understand this paragraph now. Understand this. See here. Now, quickly tell me, quickly tell me in the chat, quickly tell me in the chat, where is the primary carnivores here? Where is the primary carnivores? Tell me fast. Where is the primary carnivores? Here. <clears throat> tell me in the chat right now. Tell me where is the primary carnivores here? First, tell me, tell me, tell me. Where is the primary carnivores here? The primary carnivores is here. That is your secondary consumer. Remember, secondary consumer is your primary carnivore. Carnivore. Now, what about your secondary consumer? This is your secondary consumer. Then we have producers at the first tropic level. Then we have primary consumer at second tropic level. That is also called as herbivores. Then we have, then we have secondary consumers at Third tropic level, tertiary consumer at fourth tropic level. Clear? Amazing. Now, next one. Important line. Very, very, very important line. What is standing crop? Standing state was there. Standing state is gone. You only have standing crop right now. Each tropic level has a certain mass of living material. Right? Every single, every single tropic level will have some mass. It will have some mass here at a particular time is called as standing crop. What is standing crop? Standing crop is nothing but each tropic level has a certain mass of organic matter at a particular time. 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, no. Which season wise? It is season wise. At which season at a particular time, how much of organic matter is present? That is called as your standing crop. The standing crop is measured as the mass of the living organism also called as biomass or number in 
a unit area. The biomass of a species is expressed in the terms of fresh or dry weight. Clear? Fresh or dry weight. Now, oof, now we have a 10% law. Now we have the 10% law. <clears throat> My throat is drying a little. Should I go drink some water and come? Let's finish. We'll finish this. We only have hardly around 2-3 concepts. We can finish it. Now listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very, very carefully. I think I should do a numerical. Nah, it's fine. I will explain you 10% law now. I'll explain you 10% law now. Listen very carefully. 10% law is nothing but 10% law is also called as your Lindman's law. It is also called as your Lindman's law. So what is the meaning of 10% law? In 10% law, it is telling you when energy, when energy is sent from one tropic level to the next tropic level, is the entire energy sent? Is the entire energy sent? You're like, no, sir, not all the energy. Only and only 10% of energy is sent from one tropic level to the next tropic level. 90% of the energy is used by the organism. For example, listen to me very carefully. We have the plants here. Then we have a frog. One second. Let's take a grasshopper. Then we have a grasshopper here. Then we have a frog. Then we have a snake. Then we have a snake. Now listen to me very carefully. <clears throat> Plants are producing 100 kilojoules of energy. Out of this 100 kilojoules of energy, only and only 10% will be sent to the next tropic level. 90% will be used by the plants for respiration purposes. So what is 10% of your 100 is 10 kilojoules is sent to the grasshopper. Out of this 10%, out, out of this 10 kilojoules, only 1 kilojoule is sent here. Yes. Then 0 0.1 kilojoules is sent to the next one. Do you see? What are you seeing? Only 10% is being passed on. Only and only 10% of energy is passed on to the next generation. Next gen, not generation, to the next tropic level. To the next tropic level. The number of tropic level in a grazing food chain is restricted as the transfer of energy allows only 10% law. 10%. So only 10% of the energy is transferred from one tropic level from, from the lower tropic level to the next tropic level. In nature, it is possible to have so many levels. Producers, plants, herbivore, grasshopper, primary carnivore, frog, secondary carnivore, snake, in a grazing food chain. Right? And out of this, all of them, out of this, all the organisms, only and only 10% is transferred. Only and only 10% of energy is transferred. Clear? Clear? Can I ask you a question? Only 10% of energy is transferred. <clears throat> if a plant if a plant is producing 10,000 kilojoules of energy, if a plant is producing 10,000 kilojoules of energy, how much energy? How much of energy will be at primary How much of energy will be at the primary carnivorous level? How much of energy will be there in the primary carnivorous level? Students, answer this question and I will go drink some water and come. Okay? Give me two minutes, I'll drink some water and come. 
by then answer this question okay answer this question give me two minutes i will drink water and come Students, can I tell you a trick? I forgot to get my bottle today. I forgot to get my bottle. Yes, I forgot to get my bottle. Can I tell you a trick here? Can I tell you a trick? Can I tell you a trick here? Listen to the trick. Listen to the trick here. <clears throat> Listen to the trick. Whenever someone asks you, Whenever they are asking you such questions, when they are asking you such questions as primary carnivore level, when they are asking you primary carnivore level, take carnivores as n. There is a small formula. There is a small formula. Tropic level is always n plus 2. Consumer is n plus 1. And Carnivores n. Carnivores is n. Now, students, listen to me. This is primary carnivores. Primary means 1 plus 1 here. This is 1. This is 1 plus 1. This is 1 plus 1. So, primary carnivores is primary carnivores is secondary consumer. See the trick. See the trick. Primary carnivore. Primary carnivore is your primary carnivore is secondary consumer. Now, 1 plus 1 is what? 2. So, your primary carnivore is secondary consumer. Now, here, n is 1. So, 1 plus 2 is what? 1 plus 2 is 3. So, your primary carnivore, primary carnivore will be at the third tropic level. Primary carnivore will be at the third tropic level. So, we have first tropic level here, which is the plant, is the plant that is 10,000 kilojoules, 10,000 kilojoules, then we have second tropic level, some other organism, then at the third tropic level here, at the third tropic level, we have the primary carnivore. So, if this has 10,000 kilojoules, here the second tropic level, here the second tropic level, it will have 10% of it, it is 1000 and here, when we come to primary carnivores, when we come to primary carnivores, it will become 100 kilojoules. How many told the answer? How many told the answer? Tell me Chenna chat right now. How many people told it properly? How many students out there told the answer properly? This is how you apply the trick. Consume, if they ask you in carnivores, take carnivores as N. So carnivores N plus 1 is consumers. N plus 2 is your tropic level. So, third tropic level will be the answer. Second will be 1000, exactly. Second will be 1000 kilojoules. Are you able to do it? Are you able to do it? Amazing. Amazing. Now, percent law. So, energy is every single some amount of energy, some amount of energy lost as the respiration that is 90 percent is lost as heat okay try to, solve some try to solve some questions all of you the amount of living matter amount sorry, amount of living material amount of living material different tropic levels same is called 10 seconds all of you i want marks also now you can't hear me. What, what is happening? Students, are you able to hear me? Check, 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 sound check. 
साउंड चेक साउंड चेक स्टूडेंट्स आर यू एबल टू हियर मी साउंड चेक साउंड चेक साउंड चेक आर यू एबल टू हियर मी अरे क्लास इज गोइंग सो वेल एंड देन स्टडी इन द माइक इज गिविंग हैंड साउंड चेक साउंड चेक हियर मी नाउ Tell me in the chat. Are you able to hear me now? Check, check, check. Are you able to hear me? Are you able to hear me? Yes. Amazing. Students, here the answer is your standing crop. Standing crop is nothing but the amount of organic matter present at the particular tropic level at a given time. Okay. That is standing crop. Next question. Which of the following best describes a food web? Which is the proper definition of a food chain? Food web. I'll give you. 20 seconds 20 seconds on this question quick 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 where are the students where are the students quick quick answers i want need yes i see some of the students have gone already shivani yes it is the a group of food chains interlinked and interdependent clear clear Yeah, sometimes the mic, sometimes the board. Cool. It is the option number B. Next question: The detritus food chain involves decomposers, organisms that feed on dead and decaying matter. Detritus. While grazing food chain has what? What does grazing food chain has? What does grazing food chain has? Take twenty seconds. Take twenty seconds to answer the question. Oh my God! What happened? Take twenty seconds to answer the question. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Times up. That is your. It begins with autotrophic organisms. The food chain starts with the autotrophs and ends with. Dead road uh, ends with the decomposers. Clear. Next question. Next question, students. Did you see? Did you see how the questions can be confusing? Did you see? See concepts are easy, but questions can be difficult. Rem remember that concepts are easy, questions can be difficult here. Okay. See here. Fix this in the soil. Do they fix to the soil? No, they do not fix to the soil. They do not fix to the soil here. Remember that. I want all of your marks now. Quickly tell me all of your marks. Quickly tell me all of your marks now. Tell me your marks. Next question here. The study the image and identify the amount of energy available for eagle. How much of energy is available for eagle if the amount of energy available at the grasshopper? Grasshopper. See, grasshopper is two thousand kilo joules. Ten percent law. Ten percent law always. Ten percent law. Check check. Ten percent law. Tell me quickly. So grass upper as student, this will have two hundred. This will have your twenty. This will have zero point. Hey hey, this will have two. This will have two. Zero point. Two thousand two hundred twenty. Keep removing one one zero. Keep removing one one zero. Remember that you have to keep removing one one zero. Here we had. Well, what will be in grass? Grass will be now. So we have here grass over frog, snake, snake, and eagle. Clear. Next question: Plants capture only dash percent of the active radiation. Out of the fifty percent of PAR, how much of radiation is the? How much of radiation is the plant absorbing? Is the voice breaking, students? Is the voice breaking still? One second, students. One second. One second.
चेक 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 नाउ ऑल दिस प्रॉब्लम अपन आफ्टर लेफ्ट आफ्टर आई वेंट टू ड्रिंक वाटर आफ्टर आई वेंट टू ड्रिंक वाटर दिस व्हाट आई हैपनिंग मैं जो लाइक इन माय पेन या आंसर इज 2 टू 10 परसेंट नाउ कैन वी स्टार्ट द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर कैन वी स्टार्ट द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर नाउ इट इज ओके is the is that is the mic okay now can we start give me next 20 10 minutes takes 15 minutes next 15 minutes we will finish the entire chapter and students write down plus 4 marks here write down plus 4 marks here okay are yaar the class is going so fast now what happens see class is going so well Suddenly there is mic glitch. Can we start? Can we start? Ready? Show some energy now, students. I've been teaching from past two and a uh, two hours twenty minutes. My energy is not going down. I want every one of you to have the same energy and same enthusiasm to start. Show me some energy in the chat, and I will start the last part of the chapter, ecological pyramid. Can we start? This is a plus four topic. This right here is a plus four topic. Can we start? Some green has the chat. Students, this is a pyramid. Bottom part of the pyramid. This is the bottom part of the pyramid, which is the much more broader part of the pyramid. Now, in this broader part of the pyramid, there is producers at the bottom, and this part here, this part here is called as what apex. This part is called as apex, where we have the Where what do we have there? We have the top carnivores. We have the top carnivores on the top. Now, you must be familiar with the shape of the pyramid, right there. The base of the pyramid is broad and and it's narrow towards the apex. Broad and narrow the apex. One gets a similar shape when you express the food or energy relationship between the organisms. Okay. at different see i'm not students i'm not going and writing because i want to stand still so the voice is proper okay at different tropic levels this relationship is expressed in the terms of number so how many types of pyramids do we have we have different types of pyramids for example we have the pyramid of number pyramid of biomass and pyramid of energy three different types of pyramids are there okay the base of the pyramid represents the producers the base is the producers or the first tropic level also called as the first tropic level or the first tropic level right while apex represents the tertiary or top carnivores it is the top carnivores here the three types of ecological pyramids that are usually studied are pyramid of number pyramid of biomass as well as pyramid of energy now quickly tell me in the chat which pyramid is always upright tell me in the chat which pyramid is always upright tell me in the chat which pyramid is always upright tell me in the chat right now which pyramid is always upright it cannot be ulta no tell me first which is always upright is it audible students am i audible to you or am i speaking to myself or am i speaking to myself is it breaking ha <sighs> students i put some do some magic do some magic i hope until ecological pyramids the voice is proper because i want to finish this proper i want to finish this entire part i do not want to stop the chapter right now i want to finish the entire chapter okay pyramid of energy is always pyramid of energy is i'll hold this pyramid of energy is always always upright okay the base done done right now we have first one here the pyramid of first one we have here is the pyramid of number first we have the pyramid of number listen to my words very carefully can you see this pyramid of number first base broad base is the producer broad base is the producer here producer then we have the primary consumer secondary consumer and tertiary consumer Producers, primary consumer, secondary consumer, and 
tertiary consumer. Now this is a upright. This is a upright pyramid. And here, if you notice one thing, that is so much number less less. Suddenly there's a sharp decrease. Can you see? Suddenly there's a sharp decrease in the number here. That is, it means that the top carnivores are actually very few in number. The top carnivores are very few in number, and this is example of this is example of your pyramid of number in grassland ecosystem. Very, very, very important. This is example in the grassland ecosystem. Only the three top carnivores are supported in the ecosystem based on the production of nearly six million plants. In total, there are six million plants, but only in the end we have three carnivores. This is a pyramid of number. Now, then we have pyramid of biomass. Now, this is a pyramid of biomass in the case of your. It's not given here. This is a pyramid of biomass in the case of forest. This is a pyramid in the case of forest or terrestrial or terrestrial. Can you see? Producers, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. Biomass is given here. Biomass is given here. Yes. Pyramid of biomass showing a sharp decrease in biomass. Can you see? A sharp decrease in biomass. Why? Why? At higher tropic levels, why do you think there is a sharp decrease? Because biomass at the top carnivores is very less. Right? At the top it is very less. And this is a pyramid of biomass for your forest. Now, can you see this biomass here? This is also is a pyramid of biomass. But here, but here it is inverted. It is ulta. Why is it ulta or inverted? It is inverted because it is inverted because can you see this is a pyramid of biomass in the case of aquatic ecosystem. In the case of see, can you see I'm using only one hand. Other hand is holding a mic here in the hand. Other hand I'm holding a mic here. That's why it's proper. Okay. It is in the case of aquatic ecosystem. In the case of aquatic ecosystem, it is inverted. It is inverted. It is inverted. Okay. Biomass is the total organic matter. Biomass is the total organic matter. Standing crop. Standing crop is the organic matter at a given time. That is standing crop. Okay. Can you see this is inverted? Why? Because biomass of the phytoplanktons support a large standing crop of zooplanktons. This is your phytoplanktons whose biomass is very small. Phytoplanktons are very tiny. And they what is the lifespan? The reason this is the reason this is small is because the phytoplanktons are very small. Their lifespan, their lifespan is very less. They will replicate and they will die very fast. If they are replicating and dying very fast, if their size is very less, will the biomass will be more or less? Biomass will be obviously less than. Biomass will be obviously less than. That is why in the case of that is why in the case of phytoplanktons, here biomass is less, but in the case of zooplanktons, the biomass is more. Remember, don't buy hard this. Don't buy hard this. Understand why phyto phytoplankton is less in number. Biomass is less. Why? Because size is less and also the they replicate faster and they die faster. Okay. Now, biomass. This is the pyramid of your energy energy biomass of energy remember students by energy pyramid is always upright it is always upright why because the energy flow is always and always and always unidirectional remember it is always unidirectional in nature we cannot send the energy back to the sun You're like no take take energy back we can't tell that it is fixed can you see here 10,000, 10 what is this 10% law. 10% law. Okay. So, two things which you need to identify here. The first thing here is, first point here is, unidirectional flow of energy. The second point here is, as we go from the first tropic level to the next tropic level, the energy is decreasing. 10% law. The ideal pyramid of energy, observe the primary producers convert only 
one percent of the energy into sunlight available for them into NPP. Okay. Remember, understand the lines. Don't buy heart any of this. Understand the pyramids, then only you understand. Now, students, last part of the chapter, many questions come from here. Many questions come from here. Any calculation of energy content, biomass or number has, a, has to include all organism at the tropic level. No generalization will make will be true if we take only few individuals at tropic level. We have to take so many of them. Okay. Also, a given organism may occupy more than one tropic level, more than one tropic level simultaneously. One must remember that a tropic, the tropic level represents a functional level, functional level, not a species as such. So tropic level is not for this one species, it is for a group of organisms. A given, a given species may occupy more than one tropic level in the same ecosystem at the same time. For example, a sparrow is a primary consumer when it eats a seed, it is a primary consumer, a fruit B or A and a secondary consumer. The same sparrow is also a secondary consumer when it is, when it eats insects and worms, worms. So this one organism, one organism can be part of two different types of tropic levels same time. Like how you can have, you will tell, I have one best friend, you have one more best friend. You can have two different best friends at the same time. Yes, just like that. Okay. Now, in most ecosystem, all very important, very important. PYQ alert. Many PYQs will come from this. Many PYQs have come from here. Okay. In most ecosystem, all pyramids of number and energy and biomass are upright. That is not true. Okay. Producers are more in number and biomass and biomass than the herbivores. Obviously, plants are more in number. Plants are more in number. And herbivores are more in number than the number in biomass than the carnivores. Obviously. And also, energy at the lower tropic level is always more than the high tropic level. Energy is always low. Energy is more at the lower tropic level. Plants are producers, more energy. There are exceptions. Now, this is clear. This is important now. There are exceptions to this generalization. If you were to count the number of insects, number of insects feeding on a big tree, what kind of pyramid would you get? Can anyone tell me? Have you ever tried to draw this pyramid? Have anyone ever tried to draw this pyramid right here? Have you tried? If you have not tried, I will draw it for you. I will draw it for you. Here we have a big tree. On this big tree, we have a small, small insects. So this tree is in number, if you take in number or biomass, the tree is one. So can I draw like this? Yes. This is the first one. Now, there are many insects. There are many insects feeding on this particular tree. So, this is the number of the insects. Now, all these insects are eaten by other birds. This is the other birds. These, this is the other birds. This is how the pyramid look like. This is how the pyramid look like. One tree, only one tree in number, only one tree which is, this is pyramid of number, only one tree, which is, you know, only one tree is there and many insects and many insects are there. This pyramid is inverted. This pyramid is actually inverted. So, pyramid of number can be inverted. Pyramid of number is upright in forest, but inverted in a tree, inverted in tree. For number, for biomass it is different, but here is actually for number. This question has come for number also. Pyramid of biomass is upright in terrestrial. Pyramid of biomass is also inverted in aquatic. Remember my words. Pyramid of biomass in aquatic, it is reverse, inverted. Okay. Pyramid of biomass in sea is generally inverted because the biomass of fishes are far exceeding that of phytoplanktons. Pyramid of energy is always upright, always upright, can never be inverted because 
when the energy flows from one particular tropic level to the next tropic level some energy is always lost as the heat at each step each bar in a energy pyramid indicates the amount of energy present at each tropic level in a given time or annually per unit area so each bar is representing something what is it representing each bar here in a energy tropic level is representing your amount of energy present amount of energy present at each tropic level in a given time or per unit area or per unit area okay clear amazing now however there are certain limitations <clears throat> this is the drawbacks of pyramid drawbacks of your ecological pyramids what are drawbacks it does not take into account that same species belonging to the two or more tropic level so one species can belong to many tropic levels example uh, if crazy has a best friend it doesn't mean that best friend will cannot have other best friend he can have other best friends right that is what we're telling so i'll write sparrow as an example here you should understand that is your one organism can be present in many different tropic levels second one it assumes a simple food chain that is it does not include does not include food web it does not include food web it does not include food web that is the food ecological pyramids the last point here is it does not include saprotropes right it does not include decomposers it does not include decomposers okay food web moreover saprophytes are not given any place they're like they kicked sacrifice out they kicked it out and they're like no you are not involved in the ecological pyramids so last point here is saprotropes are not included yes saprophytes are not included saprophytes are not included here in the even though they play a vital role in the echo system that is the end of the chapter that is the end of the chapter oh we have a spa uh, spammer is there spa spammer or is it sanvi itself exactly detri wars are not given a place they are kicked out here okay students the entire chapter is over now i will read the summary once i will read the summary once just listen to it just listen to it and you will you know understand the concept one more time just listen to me once okay sanvi uh, fake sanvi try to listen to it because i can read really well okay fake sanvi you also listen to my words very well you will also understand something today okay summary an ecosystem is a structural and functional unit of nature and it comprises of both abiotic and biotic components we learned that yes we learned that abiotic components are inorganic materials air water and soil whereas biotic components are producers biotic components are producers consumers and decomposers each ecosystem has characteristics characteristic physical structure i told you about physical structure remember resulting from interaction among the biotic and abiotic component species composition and stratification and stratification are two main structural features of a ecosystem based on sources of nutrients every organism occupies a place in a ecosystem productivity decomposition energy flow and nutrient cycling are the four important components of an ecosystem primary productivity is the rate of uh, rate of capture of solar radiation or energy or biomass production of the producers biomass production of the producers it is divided into two types gross primary productivity also called as gpp and net primary productivity also called as npp rate of capture of solar energy or total production of organic matter is called as gpp npp is the remaining remaining biomass or energy left after utilizing of the producer utilization of the producers secondary productivity is the rate of 
assimilation of food energy by the consumers in decomposition complex organic components of detritus are converted into carbon dioxide water and inorganic nutrients by the decomposers decomposition involves three processes namely fragmentation detritus leaching and catabolism the other other two are your mineralization and humification energy flow is unidirectional first plants capture the solar radiation and then food is transferred from producers to the decomposers organisms of different trophic levels in a food chain are connected to each other for food or energy relationship forming a food chain in total the storage of and storage and movement of nutrient elements through the various components of an ecosystem is called as nutrient cycling please remember what is nutrient cycling here nutrients are see students in your chapter in your chapter the nutrient cycling is not thought in the chapter nutrient cycling is not thought anywhere but in the summary in the summary they have given are you able to notice are you able to notice that in the summary they have given so can the question come from nutrient cycle yes because in the summary of the new ncrt in the summary of the new ncrt the content is given remember that in summary it is given that is why that is why I'm making you read the, that is why I'm making you read the summary okay nutrient cycling is of two types gaseous and sedimentary gaseous is your which one let me read here atmosphere or hydros hydrosphere is the reserve for the gaseous type of cycle that is the carbon is the gaseous one whereas earth's crust is the reservoir for the sedimentary tribe that is the phosphorus so if you tell me in the examination is if you get a question which is the gaseous type of uh, nutrient cycle you should tell me it is your carbon what is sedimentary type it is the phosphorus so students do not be like it is not there in the syllabus i will not read please know please know that summary it is given here summary it is given here okay the product of ecosystem processes are named as ecosystem services see ecosystem services are also given here in the description of your new ncrt in the description of your new ncrt it is given here that is why i'm telling you the importance of summary example purification of air and water by the forest those are those are the ecosystem services now you know what is the importance of now do you know what is the importance of your summary this is the importance of summary even though the topics may be removed summary it is mentioned summary it is mentioned okay done so my so this information not anyone will tell you not if you go if you go somewhere else they will not tell you that you know summary is important they don't need summary they will tell you ecological nutrient cycle has been removed they will never tell you this it is there in, in the syllabus it is there in the syllabus okay that is the end of the session that is the end of the session now students now students my dear students do you want to do pyq students i have taken a lot of your time i have taken you a lot of your time now from here onwards from here onwards only if you want all of you if you want to solve some previous year need questions do you want to solve see i can stop the class now i didn't stop the class right now if you want i can stop right now if you want i can stop the class right now but students if you are determined if you want to do if you want to do pvs year questions tell me right now tell me right now if you want to do or do you want to leave the class and go right now tell me tell me right now do you want to solve previous equations if my students want previous equations i will give them i will make sure they solve previous equations do you want show some love in the chat then if you want to solve the previous equation so show some love in the chat and i'll make sure you solve previous equations yes i want some more josh i want to see some more josh yes i feel preeti has to go somewhere she's like no no sir i will not do okay so students this is going to be rapid fire this is going to be like rapid fire i will give you some time not a lot of time we will do pyqs on your request on your request we will do pyqs let's start 
okay the first pyq is here from from need 2023 need 2023 the first pyq is here on your screen go in a equation gpp minus r is called as npp gross prime reproductivity minus respiration is called as net prime reproductivity yes the gpp is here npp is here the r here stands for quick answers r here stands for r here stands for yes i love green hearts more botany right tell me first what is the r here r is nothing but your r is nothing but your respiratory loss not respiratory quotient respiratory quotient is the wrong answer the answer here is your respiratory loss r is the respiratory loss quick i want answers to be spammed now all of you become the spammers now all of you become the spammers in my chat and spam the answers okay next question identify the correct statement see statement based question i made you write down this detrivores perform the fragmentation Humus is further degraded by some microbes into mineralization. Water soluble inorganic nutrients go down into the soil and get precipitated by a process called as leaching. Detritus food chain begins with the living organisms. Earthworms break down the detritus into small particles by a process called as catabolism. Tell me, tell me right now quickly. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer statements here are your A, B and C. Not E and D. Why? Why is it not? See, detritus food chain starts for the, from the dead and decaying matter. Not from your living organisms. So, wrong here. Now, here if you see, earth won't break down the detritus into the smaller fragments. But what's called as catabolism? No. Earth forms are involved where? Earthworms are involved in the fragmentation, not in the catabolism. Okay? Not in the catabolism. Next question. Given below are two statements. Statement number one. Decomposition is a process in which the detritus is degraded into simpler substances called by the microbes. Okay? Decomposition is faster if the detritus is rich in lignin and chitin. Tell me first. Tell me first. Which of the following statements are correct? Quickly, quick answers. I want everyone to like the video. Sani, who was here, please like the video and get out. Tell me quickly. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. That is, statement 1 is correct. Statement two wrong is wrong because whenever, whenever there is lignin and chitin, lignin and chitin will do what? Lignin and chitin will decrease the decomposition. Remember, I made you write down factors affecting decomposition. You know the answer. You know the answer. Right? Next question. Need 2022. Identify the correct set of statements with regards to the prop properties of humus did i make you write down the properties of humus why because it's a pyq highly resistant to microbial action yes dark color amorphous substance yes end product of detritus food chain tell me right now reservoir of nutrients yes undergoes decomposition very fast does it go very fast or very slow decomposition very slow decomposition wrong and wrong so a b and d are correct a, B and D are correct. It is not the end product of food chain. It is not the end product of the food chain. So you know what are the properties. Highly resistant, dark color, reservoir of nutrients. So option number A. Option number A is absolutely correct here. Now, next question. Need 2022 question. Which of the following is not correct? Not correct regarding the decomposition of the waste. Are you seeing the number of questions from the decomposition? Are you looking at it? Yes. Low temperature. I made you write down. Did I make you write down all these points? Yes. Low temperature inhibits decomposition. Yes. Warm and moist environment favors the process. Yes. The process is anaerobic. Is it anaerobic? Tell me in the chat right now. Tell me quickly. It is slower if detritus is rich in protein and carbon dioxide and carbohydrates. Is it slow? No, it is fast. Detritus is regarded as the 
simple, simpler, simpler inorganic substance. Dead red, dead is a degraded by. Dead red is degraded by into simpler inorganic substance by fungal and bacterial enzymes. How many are correct? Quickly, quickly. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Times up. All which are incorrect here. The incorrect one here is the C is incorrect and D is incorrect. Two are incorrect here. Two are incorrect here. Clear? It is not an anaerobic process. It needs oxygen. That is why. That is why we know the farmer's friend. He making air pockets. Is it is making air pockets to make sure air is coming out. Yes. And this is wrong because whenever the protein protein is made up of what? Protein is made up of nitrogen. Carbohydrates are a type of sugar. So whenever there is nitrogen and sugar, the process will increase, not decrease. Okay. Next question. Given below are two statements. Pyramid of energy is always upright and it is the most efficient one. The pyramid of biomass in C is generally inverted. 10 seconds. 10. Crazy, I marked here. No, I didn't I mark here? Not correct. Did I see here? Not correct. I didn't I mark here? Not correct. Read the question properly. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. That is, both statements are correct now. Both the statements are correct. Both the statements are correct here. That is, pyramid of energy is always upright and pyramid of biomass in C is generally inverted. In the aquatic ecosystem, it is always inverted. Okay? Clear? Next question. The amount of biomass, the amount of biomass or organic matter, the amount of biomass or organic matter produced per unit area over a period of time in plants during photosynthesis is called as 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. It is called as your primary production. Starting chap first point. Starting point primary production. Remember, primary production. That is, plants are producing what? Organic matter over a unit unit time period is during photosynthesis like your parents how your parents are making your parents are making food right bringing money that is your primary production okay now some of them can write c here don't worry c is wrong here okay definition of gross is different next question need 2021 question students we See, uh, yeah, B only is the correct answer, na? Now, which of the following is the statement is not read? Not correct. Not correct. Pyramid of energy is always upright. Correct. Pyramid of number in grassland ecosystem is upright. Correct. Pyramid of biomass in C is generally inverted. Correct. Pyramid of biomass in C is generally upright, which is incorrect here. 10, 9, 8. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The incorrect one is your here. Shivani, remember, pyramid of number in grassland. Remember, in grassland it is upright. Pyramid of number in grassland it is upright. <coughs> that was the first one. Pyramid of biomass in C is, in, is inverted is the wrong option. In the C it is always inverted. Okay. Are you able to solve the questions? Are you able to solve all the questions? Ninth question. Which of the following statement is incorrect again? Are you noticing a pattern? They're asking you incorrect more than correct options. Incorrect. Biomass decreases from the first to the photropic level. Correct. Energy content gradually increases from the first to the photropic level. Does the energy increase from first to the extropic level? Tell me right now, chat. Number of individuals decrease from the first tropic level to the four tropic level. Number of individuals decrease from first tropic to four tropic. Yes. Energy content gradually decreases from the first to four tropic level. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Incorrect option. Because we know 
we know that energy cannot increase 10 percent law very very wrong very very wrong okay last question last question from need 2018 let's see who answers this first the type of ecological pyramid would be obtained with the following data they have given you data they have given you data here the primary producers is 10 mg this 10 grams then we have primary consumers 60 this is 10 then we have tertiary consumers is at 120 grams They have given you biomass here, right? They have given you grams. They have given you grams here. Oh my god, where did I keep the pen? Oh. The inverted pyramid of biomass. So, first one is see, always write primary producers will always write first. We'll always write primary producers, right? Primary producers are always first. So, first, then you next, next. This is the example for which one? Example for which one? Tell me first. Tell me in the chat. This inverted biomass. Where do you notice the inverted biomass? Where do you notice the inverted biomass? Tell me in the chat. Students, the entire session is over. If you want all the notes, will be available on the Telegram channel. And students, listen to me very carefully. If you have not utilized this particular thing right now, all of you will get one hitting from me. Okay, I usually don't hit my students, but if you have not used, if you have not used the following type of data, following information, it's going to be very difficult for you. Because there are so many students out there who are not able to afford things, we are giving everything for free. So please, go on, use this. Students, there is one more thing which we are having right now. That is nothing but your, that is nothing but the Vidya Gokul test series. Because students, that is very, very important because if you do not attend it right now, if you do not enroll in the test series right now, later on it can become very expensive. Yes, it can become expensive. So right now, Vidya Google series is free. So please go use it. So please go use it. Students, this is a Telegram channel. This is your Telegram channel. Please join this Telegram channel. The Vidant Neat English. Everything, all the notes from my side will be here. Okay. Now I have to show you one more thing. That is... I didn't get any, get any gifts. No gifts, nothing. 26 sir. Oh my god. I think it's a refresh. Can you see here? Vidya Gokul mock test series. Students, I'm telling you. This is the gift we are giving you. As Saraswati knowledge, we need to share the knowledge. We cannot hold it back. That's why we are teaching for free on YouTube. We are giving everything for free. So please go on. Click on this. Can you see this? Click on this. You get a page like this. Can you see this? 2024 Vidya Gokul mock test series is live right now for biology, chemistry and physics. Can you see this? Click on biology. Something will happen. Why is it not loading? Oh, you have to sign in. Okay. I have not signed in. That's why it's not visible for me. You need to sign in. Sign in for free it is. Please go join us. Completely free. Join it. Okay. Wow. Okay. I am not blushing or anything. Okay. So that is the end of the chapter. Students, now you have three jobs. I always tell my class three jobs. The first thing you need to do is, if you have any doubts regarding this chapter, let me know in the comment section. Any doubt, any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Second thing, if you do not have any doubts, if you do not have any doubts, please go to the comments and type ecosystem done and dusted ecosystem done and dusted in the comments and all the students let me know in the comment section how was the ecology with me tell me in the comment section how was the ecology with me ecology with baswa sir ecology with your favorite baswa sir let me know in the comment section how was ecology today okay how was the ecology today 
Is it interesting? Is the ecology interesting? Or was it difficult? Or did I make it easy for you? If I made it easy for you, let me know in the comment section. Okay. So until then, I will see you in the next class. What do I should, what should teach in the next class? Students, let me know in the comment section which is the next chapter you want from my side. Okay. And don't worry, I will be doing the plant kingdom also. But let us now focus on the class 12 topics for now. Let's focus on class 12 topics for now. After that, we will do. After that, we will do the entire thing. Okay. Assume a simple food chain. In the simple food chain means a normal chain that is plants, grasshopper, frog, snake, and also an eagle. That is a simple food chain. Okay. Until then, I'll see you. Oh. Until then, I'll see you in the next class. And don't forget to like the video. Don't be confused. Like the video. I'll see you in the next class. Bye bye, students. Take care, all of you. Bye bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Both the hands.